Hello, hello, good morning. I feel like I'm at the centre of a starburst. <laughs> the placement of this quilt behind me is um, couldn't be more perfect or less perfect, depending on your viewpoint, I guess. Um, <laughs> well, welcome to Surrey Street, everybody. It's Sunday morning. I'm Stuart Hillard. It's a hot one today. Significant days today. It's National Kitten Day. Hello, it's also National Pina Colada Day. I'm living for that later on. And there was something else, wasn't there? Teddy Bear's Picnic Day. So just a thought this afternoon, if you're not doing anything else, what about grabbing a teddy bear and going to the woods? You know me, I do love a bear. Now, let's get started with our early bird. And a very, very bright good morning to Mo, who says good morning, Stuart, on this glorious day. Pauline, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Anne's got in touch to say good morning. And Betty as well. Good morning. Lots of kisses to you. Good morning to everybody. Now, let's get started with our early bird. It's one of my hero products. This is something, if you've never used it before, I urge you, this is one of those occasions where you'll spend a little money and you will save yourself an awful lot more. Let me explain what our early bird is. It is batting seam tape. It's made by Bosel and it is superb. Essentially what it is, is it is, can I, I can open this, can't I? Yeah, let's get it open. Um, it is a roll of seam tape, batting seam tape, and I'm just going to grab some scissors and open this up so you can see what it is. You're going to use this to join your oddments, your offcuts of quilt batting together to make completely seamless, flat, big batting that you can then use to layer your new quilt top and it could be for a bed quilt it could be for table runners or a wall hanging we've all got off cuts haven't we we've all got off cuts of batting that we have left over where we've trimmed off strips or perhaps we only needed we needed a square of batting and we've got this weird shaped rectangle that's left over and we think well I'll keep that because I'm not throwing it away because that cost you know a decent amount of money but then you never make this thin strip of a quilt to use it for and I say to myself sometimes oh I'll make table mats but I don't well this batting seam tape is going to change what you do with those pieces of batting so what you're going to do is you're going to grab your batting okay and um, these probably are smaller bits than I would bother with but you get the idea we've already had a go at this one let me trim that down. So what you do is you get your pieces of batting and you want to trim your edges sort of straight or even. So if they're very, very wobbly, you know, trim those down just so that they butt up nicely. Because what you want to do then is you want to abut rather than overlap. So you don't want this kind of thing because you'll end up with a lump and a bump. Now, traditionally, if you wanted to join batting, what you would need to do is you would need to use a needle and thread, hand needle and thread, and kind of whip stitch between the two or ladder stitch between the two to join those pieces together. I know some people say, run it through your machine with a zigzag and zigzag over the top. That is going to flatten that bit of batting. You will see that in your finished quilt okay it's okay for some smaller things but we're talking about using our scraps up to create proper big quilt batting so what you're going to do is lay this tape over the top of your seam okay it's fusible on one side make sure the fusible side is against your batting make sure everything's pushed up together and then literally just an iron 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 down there and that's going to fuse those layers together i would always then flip it over and do the same on the back so that you've got that reinforcement front and back but then what that does is it completely fills in the join and it holds the layers together it creates seamless batting 
<coughs> excuse me, and you'll be able to use all your scraps up to create a whole big batting. Now, there's no reason for you to not join lots and lots of different pieces of batting together. You can have a, a proper, you know, full on Frankenstein quilt batting. It's not a problem and then just use it as you would a brand new batting. This is the equivalent of scrap quilting because you know all those scraps, those little bits, those offcuts cost exactly the same amount as the fat quarters and the half meters. Well the same is true of your quilt batting. You know you might pay $8.99 for a half meter or you might have paid, you know, pushed the boat out, paid 50 or 60 pounds for a warm and natural batting and then you've got bits left over. Don't throw them away, get your seam tape. Now, normal price is $9.99. We've dropped that price to $7.99. I would multi-buy these so that you've always got them in stock. Lots of you are multi-buying those. Well done if you've managed to get yours. Remember, once you've bought your seam batting tape today, our early bird, you've opened your shopping basket, you've paid your P&P, and that means that then for the rest of the day, you won't pay another postage and packing. Uh, good morning, by the way, to Joanne. Good morning to you. Hope you're having a good start to your day. <coughs> We've had a funny old start to the day here. It's felt like a very long morning so far, although I did get here at half past five this morning, which was half an hour earlier than I needed. Um, but yeah, it's been a funny old start to the day. Anyway, message is coming in. Thanks for getting in touch. Good morning, everyone. Enjoy the sun. That's from Jenny. Ginny, thank you. I haven't got my screen there. Uh, good morning, Stuart and everyone from Carol, who's in Norfolk, one of my favorite parts of the world. Um, we've also had a message from Karen in, Sun uh, in Surrey. Good morning, sunshine. Well, I do feel a bit sunshiny. Thank you. Sort of blending with the quilt, aren't I? That quilt behind me, by the way, is um, coming up at or even, good morning, Starshine. The crew are probably too young to remember that song. Oh, Karen, I'm not too young to remember that. It's from Hair, isn't it? The musical Hair. Always wanted to see that. It sounded a bit racy. Good morning, Stuart. Another beautiful day up at the allotment just after five this morning. Linda, who's in Ma Maiden Newton. Oh, I used to love my allotment. I used to have an allotment in Birmingham. Don't think I ever got there just after 5 a.m. though. <clears throat> it was in Kings Heath, it was. Uh, Stuart, good morning. Can this be used on Bozal? Looking forward to the show, Angela from Kingslin. Brilliant point, Angela, thank you so much. Yes, it absolutely can, it absolutely can. Now, if you're using fusible Bozal, um, if it's single-sided fusible, then obviously no issue on the top side, okay, the non-fusible side, put your batting tape there. And actually, I wouldn't bother putting it on the other side um, necessarily. If you are putting it on something that is fusible, you could always use a little bit of glue stick to just dab it into place. And then when you actually fuse your um, fabric to the other side, it'll all fuse together. But yeah, I just use it on the, on the non-fusible side. Brilliant. Yeah, don't waste your scraps. Use them, use them, use them. Sometimes you just need that little product to make something that you thought was waste into something usable. Let's do the menu. Here it is, here it is. Now, at 8 a.m., our first show, it's New Moda. We're going into the Midnight Garden. Come with me, hold my hand. At 9 a.m., Victoria Carrington is here with the Tula Pink Fancy Fantasy Quilt. That's the one hanging right behind me. I'm just gonna step out of the way. How glorious is that? It is absolutely spectacular. Um, Victoria's gonna be giving us the lowdown on how to make this quilt, and she's gonna demystify cutting and piecing those diamonds. It is not difficult. Stay tuned. She's going to show us how. Now then, at 10 a.m., Creative Grids Rulers. I'm going to be showing you all sorts of different Creative Grids Rulers, and I'm going to be doing a few demos as well, using things like the half square and quarter square triangle ruler. I'm also going to be demoing the um, hexagon trim tool. If you've any others that you'd like to see demoed, just give us a shout. You know how to message us. You know how to message us, just email the studio 
or send us a message on Facebook. Now then, 11, Victoria Carrington's back with a whole load of patterns. She's got six different patterns and she's going to be doing a little demo from each. So stay tuned for that. And then at 12 o'clock, quilt kits you'll love. So stay with us today. That sun will still be shining this afternoon. Okay, stay with us this morning. All right, let's get started then, shall we? Uh, should we have a look at the website? Let's do that, let's do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now then, if you go to www.sewingstreet.com, click on Watch Live, and then, there we go, there we go. Uh, you'll see our early bird, and you'll also see Today Show Deals, and then Pre-Order. If you go on that Pre-Order column, you'll see everything that's coming up. You'll see here that we've got our Midnight Garden fabrics. We've got Sunday Stroll as well. I'm going to be showing those next. We've also got... Oh, my top tip for this hour, Karen K. Buckley scissors. Now these are the creme de la creme, the Rolls Royce of beautiful, beautiful scissors. You've seen me using mine, now's a chance to get yours. Then we've got more beautiful fabric. Heading down to our Creative Grids hour. You can shop ahead if you want. Anything you want to get ahead of the show, just go on and pre-order. You know, if you are planning on going out later, I suppose we'll let you. But um, you can jump on and pre-order anything. Got that gorgeous non-slip double wedding ring. There's the creative grids. Oh, just go back up a little bit for me. Go back up, go back up, go back up. There we go. And stop. Right, over on the left, that Creative Grids non-slip multi-size 45 degree and 90 degree triangle ruler. Oh my goodness, what a boon, what a boon that ruler is for doing half square and quarter square triangles. I'll be honest with you, first time I used it, I thought, oh, would I really, would I? Oh, I don't. And then I tried making a block with it that used loads of half square triangles. Absolute game changer. Um. But loads of different rulers there. And then Victoria Carrington's kits. We've got so much on today, absolutely brilliant. And as I say, Victoria's gonna be doing lots and lots of demos for each of those patterns. So if you wanna learn how to do origami with fabric or maybe do her stitch and flip cushion, stay tuned. Lots of lovely fabric, of course. And then quilt kits you will love. Gorgeous. Oh, some gorgeous stuff there. Bit of Delphine Brooks, bit of Yvonne McAtamney, little bit of Lovey Dovey, bit of Ye Jason Yenta, big favourite of mine. Amanda Little. Well, everything to stay around for. Uh, also, uh, good morning, Patricia. Lots of love to you in Blackpool. I bet it's a lovely day to be in Blackpool today, isn't it? Gorgeous weather, walking along the seafront, wind in your hair, gorgeous, gorgeous. All right, let's get started with our fabulous fabric. So we're starting with the Moda, and this is Moda Midnight in the Garden. Now this is gorgeous. Now these are all available by the half meter. There's no mega bundle today, but let me just show you the whole collection together to begin with. This is the full collection. Now this is rather gorgeous, isn't it? Because you've got that lovely soft kind of mango peach, old gold, and then you've got charcoal, ash gray, and white. I really love it because it's almost monotone, but just with this little bit of soft, subtle colour. Really beautiful. It's a little bit different for Moda, um, but I just think it's adorable. Now, as soon as I saw this, I instantly thought home deck bag making. And I think that's a lovely way in because you could get yourself two half metres, perhaps a large scale and a smaller scale and you've instantly got your kit for a bag, whether it's a messenger bag, a tote, you know, or some purses, something like that. If you want to throw in a third, that just gives you a few more options to ring the changes. Lovely zippy pouches, they would just all work absolutely beautifully well with this range. So let's make a start with these large florals. We'll start with this one, which is XF85. 
So this is gorgeous, isn't it? You've got those big overblown roses, silhouette leaves, and then that gorgeous deep charcoal background. Now I just think that's lovely. I love using black with colour and I do that quite a lot, but sometimes you need a little bit more subtlety and I think this charcoal grey is really lovely. It sets the colours off, it makes them pop, but that is beautiful. Available by the half metre, these would also make lovely cushions, wouldn't they? Now we have another colourway. Again, this is very beautiful. I'll show you all the fabrics and then I'll just give you a couple of ideas in terms of combinations. CE63, this one. So this is uh, just concentrating on those golds. Charcoal leaves and a lovely crisp, light cream background. Ever so pretty, that. Oh, Claire's got in touch to say, good morning, Stuart, and all. Our all today, by the way, is Kat, who's our multi-skilled operator, uh, and uh, Ben is producing, and Charlie, there they are, look, Charlie is directing. Oh, just be grateful you can only see them in the half light. They're not allowed to venture into the light. <laughs> Stay away from the light, Carol Ann. Now then, next up, QC52. Neither of them got that reference, but I know some of you at home will. Ah, oh, pretty, pretty. Now this one's apples. And those really are delicious. Again, I'm thinking, you know, like market tote bags would be gorgeous made in this, or a shopper really nice yeah or if you're going to festival of quilts are you going to festival of quilts in the next well it's only next month isn't it i'm excited we're going to need a lot of tote bags we're going to need a lot of bags for the things that we find and the gorgeousness that's going to be there i have my own stand i hope you're going to come and see me and say hi love that love the subtleness of the colors pretty okay you got that one, didn't you? You got the code. Sorry. Next one up is EY01. This one's lovely, really soft. And of course, it's 100% cotton, 40 to 40, 42 to 44 wide. Isn't that lovely? Mmm, it's really pretty. Really like that. It's a little bit different. Oh, morning, Hilary. Morning. Oh, the gallery just said morning, Hilary. You've got special treatment. <laughs> Hilary is an old friend of mine, actually. Yeah, we've been friends for many years. Um, RK59, a message from Angela. Morning, Stuart. Love the Western shirt. Angie from Lancashire. Thank you, Angie. Do love a cowboy. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I don't know, I was just feeling like I needed a bit of, a bit of Czech realness today. Cowboy realness is what I am serving. Now, Royal Bees. Now, interestingly, I wasn't going to mention this because I find this slightly strange, but in terms of special days today, would you believe this is National Don't Step on a Bee Day? I mean, I think all 365 days of the year we should be observing that, but hey, that's just me. Um, but this has got bees on it, so quite appropriate. Perhaps what it should be is uh, just a day to remember how important those beautiful bees are to our survival. My goodness, they are, aren't they? But really gorgeous, and of course, very, very, uh, in my mind right now with the sewing bee of course anything with bees on i'm there so that would be rather gorgeous you can make a nice sewing machine cover using that or a sewing kit sewing caddy that would be lovely oh speaking of sewing bee morning Stuart. i've just been watching the first series of sewing bee on catch up from margaret who's in inverclyde margaret what are you thinking what are you thinking with the lovely Claudia, of course. 
We didn't know that Claudia was the presenter. This one's ZR45. Didn't know Claudia was the presenter until the first day we started filming. And we were all sitting on our little wheelie sewing chairs waiting and uh, they said are you ready to meet the host of the sewing bee and we said yeah you know well that was just me and uh, the doors burst open and Claudia jumped through them and she said welcome to the great British sewing bee and I was like yay and Claudia came running over to me and she jumped on my lap and threw her arms around me but of course my chair was on casters so she and I went whoosh straight across the studio on my chair true story true story very very funny start to the day oh gosh Claudia is just amazing she's so smart so funny just amazing and hair to die for Gorgeous this, and again I'm just thinking, sewing kits, sewing bags, sewing caddies, that kind of thing, absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous, love that, love that little soft touch of peach, peachy pink in the background, lovely. So those are all what you might consider the feature prints from the range, but we've also got some monochromatic fabrics. And these are rather lovely. Let me just show you these. Liking these. Now these have got a bit of a... Do you know that they're giving me a little bit of a Lewis and Irene vibe, in a way. Um, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Charlie's loving it. IZ19. Look at that. That is beautiful. Now, I'm just thinking about our lovely lady this morning who was working on the allotment. Perfect. What about a gardener's apron? I'm also thinking, of course, because instantly I'm seeing opportunities to fussy cut, especially because we have that line of almost symmetry. It's not quite. As you can see here, the carrot top is slightly on one side, but almost um, perfect mirror symmetry. But it's gorgeous, isn't it? Lots of lovely opportunities there. That would be really nice, kind of centered in the middle of a bag or on a cushion. Really lovely. Look, let's see what we've got. We've got some rabbits. We've got geese. I know geese are a firm favorite of our producer, Ben. He is loving the geese. Do we have any others? Oh, little hedgehogs, look. Little hedgehogs, gorgeous. Is that a potato? I'll be, I'll be honest with you, it's the first time I've ever seen a potato on fabric. It's probably not actually, but tomatoes, cabbages, pumpkin. We've got new potatoes, courgettes, and our first tomatoes are just starting to form in the garden, which is lovely lovely it's that feeling of being productive isn't it can't wait to start harvesting the potatoes so that's that uh, F V 82 so that's the charcoal background this is the white background oh that's gorgeous look at that really nice and again, this would be perfect if you wanted something to make something that was a bit more monochromatic, maybe not totally so, but you could make it mostly in these sort of greys and whites and then just introduce a little bit of soft colour. <coughs> maybe the pink, maybe the gold. Oh, our Delphine Brooks is watching us this morning. Good morning, Delphine. How are you, my lovely? They're all saying good morning, your majesty in the gallery. Never said that about me. <coughs> GD86. <laughs> oh, that is lovely. It's such a lovely, clean grey. Now, you know, sometimes with grey, they can be a bit um, beigey. You know, it's kind of beige or brown greys. This isn't at all. This is a cool charcoal ash. So mixes absolutely beautifully with kind of crisper whites. 
and those sort of white toned colours, you know, the, 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 with the under tone of white. Beautiful. Love that. Okay, so that's that. And then our last one is same print, TL76, but white background with the charcoal print. And that's just a great all rounder, isn't it? Yeah, I wouldn't go plain white with, well, you could do a bit of plain white, but I mean, it'd be lovely to piece these two together. You could do like positive, negative, you know, saw two star background and then saw two star background. And you could do blocks like that, be beautiful. Yum. A message. Good morning, Stuart. Got up early to watch you. I love, love, love that quilt behind you. I love, love, love that quilt too, Donna. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It is the Tula Pink. Now, it's called Fantasy. It's some kind of fantasy. Fancy fantasy. There it is. He fancy. Beautiful. <laughs> Oh, another message. Thanks for getting in touch, by the way. Good morning, Stuart. I'm watching Sewing Bee from the start. Uh, had the best contestants in the first show. Ah, oh, bless you. How can I get the pattern for the, ori excuse me, the oriental blouse that you made, Joanne from Suffolk? Oh, that was in um, episode two, wasn't it? Now that pattern, it was a Vogue pattern. It was a Vogue pattern. And um, I'll do some research. Stay with me. It'll be after the break. I'll do some research and I'll see if I can find out who it was. Lovely designer, though. She's just some amazing kind of asymmetric, little bit quirky designs. And they are all for Vogue. Hmm. Thinking caps on. But thank you. Now then, shall we move on to our second range? This is Sunday Stroll. Sunday Stroll. Now, again... My first thoughts when I saw this range was very much bag making and home deck. And I'll tell you why, because there are some lovely sort of large scale prints and there are some lovely coordinates that would just go very beautifully with them. So I just think, you know, a half meter of each and you've got that lovely bag ready to make and just something nice for in your stash really nice anyway let's go through the individual fabrics and see what you like let's start well let's start with strawberries AV25 oh look at that lovely presentation <laughs> it's a bit creased just trying to smooth that out there we go. Find a bit that isn't creased right at the bottom. There we are. That's nice. Cute though, aren't they? Really cute. That'd be lovely for dressmaking, wouldn't it, too? That'd be really nice. Or it'd be lovely as the lining to a navy PU bag. You know, maybe like a handbag or a little shoulder, <laughs> shoulder bag. And that was the inside. That was the lining. Strawberry jam, strawberry jam. Told you that story, haven't I? When I accidentally dyed my hair black and shaved my beard off during lockdown. Oh, it wasn't a good day. And Charlie said to me, I need to get you out of the house. So I was threatening to never leave the house ever again. So we went and did strawberry picking, pick your own, because he said, no one will see you, you'll be out in the field. And then we came home and we made strawberry jam, which was cute. DR48. This is the green background. Oh, this is cute. I love that. Very cute. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, do it. Oh, I love homemade strawberry jam. You just got to, you've got to boil it for a lot longer than you think, otherwise the strawberries all float to the top. They've actually got to quite break down, haven't they, really? But yeah, gosh, it was yummy. 
and I just remember every time we ate a little bit of that jam I thought back to that day and it made me smile it made the day nice and it could have been a disaster because I'd got really long you know uncut hair obviously during lockdown it was awful wasn't it and um, and then I accidentally shaved my beard if I was trimming it and I'd got it on the lowest setting and I just went and just took it back to the skin and oh it was awful oh it was awful RN02 you know when people say oh it's lovely because he looked all baby faced and it's like oh no 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 so not a good look this is cute isn't it now let me just show you a sense of scale so quite big blooms there be lovely for fussy cutting oh gosh see that's not a great image on the website look at this yeah not tempted but when you see the fabric if I hold it up actually and show you from a that's gorgeous isn't it so you think about dressmaking you can make a cute little wrap around skirt or I'll tell you what would be really nice Alison Marion or Claire uh, Janet Claire's wrap over apron done in that <clears throat> that would be so cute it's a little bit 50s isn't it jam pot covers of course now then this is a pretty one this is pu24 if you just joined us by the way don't forget to have a look at the early bird it's one of my favorite products today it's um seam batting seam tape <coughs> really really useful so this range by the way is by bonnie and camille uh two of the most beloved designers for moda They've been doing it for years and they bring out so many fabulous collections. And if you've any of their previous collections, this will fit beautifully. Now, I always, always love a stripe in my quilts and my bags. It just adds such a smartness to a design. So, for example, if you were going to use something like the strawberries for a bag, you know, and you maybe had that as the top band, something like that. Just adds a lovely smartness to the bag, doesn't it? Yummy. Okay. That's that. Uh, let's go big floral. This one is WE80. This is beautiful, isn't it? Really lovely. Now this is large scale, this one. Again, I'll just pop my hands down on the table so you can get a sense of the scale. Beautiful, isn't it? Now this would be gorgeous for the borders and alternate blocks in a quilt. You could do something like a red and white Irish chain, but then have this as the big alternate blocks running through, that would be beautiful it also just works really really well with the red and white gingham we've got that coming up just those two together and I'm thinking summer barbecue summer picnic maybe reline a picnic basket with a combination and maybe some new napkins something like that be absolutely gorgeous okay now we've got that floral in a soft aqua. This is GU31. <clears throat> That's pretty. Yeah, really pretty. <coughs> soft and delicate. Be lovely in a bedroom, that. It's nice to do pretty fabric sometimes, isn't it? So I don't use I don't use a lot of pretty fabric, you know, very delicate, soft, pretty fabrics, but these are very, very appealing. Last up, uh, we've got, well, not last up, we've got a few more, but NH62 in that pile. This is a good coordinate. Yeah, absolutely essential, something like that. Works really well with a floral. Let me just grab this one back for a second. And again, you think about a lovely market tote bag. If you've got bags for life, maybe the 
shopping trolley bags would be f fantastic done in that combo the pin dot and the floral together really like that combo yeah very nice now do get in touch and let me know what you're up to today won't you you know the rest of the day obviously i mean it's national pina colada day so i know what i'll be doing tonight but what are you doing tonight do you know what actually i'm not a lover of the pina colada it's too creamy oh, it's a bit creamy i don't mind coconut and things like that but i'm much more of a kind of something served in a martini glass if it's served in a martini glass i'll probably like it cosmopolitan yeah i'm a lover of the cosmo right let's do these gorgeous stripes because these are so smart have a look at these they are gorgeous aren't they now i'm going to start with the gray because i just think that's gorgeous and it would go really really beautifully with the midnight in the garden i mean look at that <coughs> this is the bonnie and camille this is midnight in the garden but i mean they go together that's a beautiful combo anyway wf83 yeah oh absolutely i mean clothing wise it's perfect isn't it yeah beautiful the camera doesn't like it but but we love it really smart isn't it and you know it's quite interesting because you know it very much has a look of a you know, like a men's suiting almost to it doesn't it but juxtaposing that with a floral is just really sort of smart and a little bit modern if i grab the other rose print i'm just going to lay this down look at that combo that is lovely though isn't it really like that really like that pinstripe trousers that for a shirt are you there yeah the boys are making all the right noises in the gallery also very smart for linings wouldn't it really lovely for a bag okay let's go navy and white really classic so in the summer sa30 in the summer I do love a bit of nautical love a bit of love a bit of nautical so navy and white stripe and this is a beautiful fine navy stripe on a crisp white background just perfect again lining a beach bag the outer of a beach bag so you know you don't have to do anything too complex here I'm thinking maybe the um, pinstripe for the top navy plaid for the bottom of the bag yeah okay like that I don't know if you can pull back a tiny bit Charlie um, and then what I'm thinking is you want to put some just do a nice tote bag but maybe with Bosel in our form inside and then you want two nice big brass eyelets through the front and through the back and then thick rope push through and knotted out on the outside for your handles for your shoulder straps that would be gorgeous yeah really nice and if you wanted just a little pop of something you could put just a little bit of maybe covered piping cord down in between these two seams in red red Elizabeth's got in touch to say good morning Stuart going to sort out some fabric to go with the woodland panels you demonstrated with the Dresden plate Bailey's pina colada on ice this evening luscious Liz I know I said not a pina colada but you've just tempted me what time do you want me around We'll send for pizza. Um, Collector in Merseyside's got in touch saying, Morning, Stuart. Fab to see you today. Love the way you put fabrics together and give me ideas for projects. Thank you. It's my pleasure. 
another message morning Stuart on holiday in my caravan oh you lucky bug uh, going to do some sewing outside oh love it doing a mode of garden quilt Mandy that sounds beautiful morning Stuart and team looking as gorgeous as ever in your check shirt watching you from our caravan again lucky you in sunny Olnwick off to the beach soon Anne who's in South Yorkshire oh lovely and another message hi i'm looking for a tape to use to flat join fabric like used cut up denim pieces to make my own fabric uh, i need big pieces is the bosal tape okay um no because you'd have raw edges coming together wouldn't you <clears throat> on the top it doesn't disappear you see you'd see the tape so it's okay inside something but not on the surface I don't think you can just sort of invisibly join two fabrics. All you can do is a seam. <coughs> but what I would suggest is that you embrace those seams, make a feature of those seams, even if that seam goes kind of diagonally across and another one going there. Make a feature of it. Maybe do, as you do your seam, do a run and fell or a flat fell seam like you get on jeans top stitch them with that bright yellow bright orange that you get on jeans and just make a real feature of them maybe it's an idea okay right there's that pinstripe and of course i want a shirt of course i want a shirt in that right now then cowboys cowboys yeehaw this is proper proper gingham love it love it sorry ben i haven't given you the code for that you've got it Look at that. That's proper stuff, that. Proper gingham. Yeah. Beautiful. And again, a nice sort of large gingham. So, yep, absolutely use this for quilting. Be really nice in the borders. You can also use this for sashings. I mean, gingham looks absolutely gorgeous doesn't it as a sashing and it is a diagonal gingham but also looks terrific as a binding really lovely as a binding around a quilt gorgeous nice for bag handles as well and if you've been following the um finalists on the great british sewing bee you will have seen both deborah and brogan have both made gorgeous dresses in mega red gingham both of them have a look on their instagrams and you'll see and they just look gorgeous it's a bold look but i love it okay right that's those oh two more three more fabrics navy stripe d095 Again, nautical vibes coming through here. Now, rather than, just to let you know that that background stripe is actually the softest mint green. It's a really, really soft mint green with, na yeah, with navy. Can you just about see that? If I just show you on the selvage, I'm gonna bring the selvage in. Can you kind of see it there? because it's a woven stripe rather than a print. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, I like that, it's a bit different. Again, lovely for dressmaking. What about a shirt waist dress? Mmm, gorgeous. Two more. Green stripe, MR69. And this just would earn its place in my stash. I love to do a plique. I love fresh green leaves and stems. Perfect for that. And that kind of green makes every sort of floral and brights and soft pastels, it makes them work. So if you've got lots and lots of scraps, florally scraps, this would be a great color to mix them with. <clears throat> Last one. Grey gingham, yeah, you are 6'4". Pretty, isn't it? I like that. 
And again, I'm thinking lining baskets, boxes, lining bags, outer bags. And you could mix that if you've got any of the Midnight in the Garden. Again, I'm just going to bring that in. I just think that's a gorgeous combination. Just a half a metre of each and you've got a little kit there almost to make a bag. So many different bags you can make with half a metre of each. Yeah, yeah. It's just about having that contrast, isn't it? So you have something organic and then something geometric or stripy or something like that together. And you can usually make a decent combination out of the two. Now, I'm very, very excited about the fact that we've got Karen K. Buckley scissors. Now, I have a pair of Karen K. Buckley scissors. And believe me, this is the one pair of scissors <coughs> that I always know where they are. <laughs> Okay, and they're labelled and I, because I love them so much. Should we start with the large ones? Uh, now then, did you manage to do a slide on Karen? Ah, good. Let me just let me start by just showing you. I thought it'd be useful. If you, if you haven't heard of Karen K. Buckley before, I think it's worth having a look at some of her quilts just to establish who she is and why she developed these amazing scissors. Um, it's definitely in the style of. Have you got like any large quilts that you've? <laughs> oh, I gave him one job. Come on, Ben. <laughs> Are they Karen K. Buckley quilt? Oh, on Pinterest. Have a look on Pinterest. Anyway, so Karen K. Buckley is multi-award winning quilt designer and quilter in America. She makes the most incredible pieced and appliqued quilts and her, yeah, that's a good one to show you. That's incredible. This is a good example of her work. Incredible piecing, incredible applique. Now Karen developed a range of, Karen K. developed a range of scissors it's a few years ago now and they very quickly became the scissors to have. Now these are the large size, this is NA18. And the thing that's so important about her scissors, well there's a few things, but the, the sharpness and the precision, the pointedness is second to none. They're just absolutely incredible. For precision cutting, this is a gorgeous quilt. How amazing is that? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, the way you're going to get that precision, especially cutting out things like your appliques, it's all about precise cutting. Now this is going to give you precise, precision and detail cutting, and this is perfect for right or left handed use. So either way is good. Nice soft touch, really soft grip, but they are unbelievably sharp and accurate. Um, Jan's got in touch to say Karen K Buckley scissors have been on my wish list for ages. Well, wish no more, wish no more, grab them now while you can. They are just amazing. You get the guard as well, when they're not in use, just keep that on them because I don't know if you can see just how pointed the scissors are. They're almost like surgical scissors. Can you see they're so sharp? Look at that. Well, I do hide them from everybody because I wouldn't want anybody using them for anything, including fabric. They're mine. <laughs> Absolutely bro. Okay, so there's the large multi-purpose. Now then, this next one is ZN25. And these are the multi-purpose small scissors. So these are really small, fine ones. Yeah. Yeah, you'll see quite a few of us using these. Mine are purple. I've got the large size and they're purple handles. You'll see me using those. 
Um, the sharpness to the point is incredible. So if you're doing things like hand applique or machine applique, you're cutting out your pieces, bond web applique as well, so you get so precise cutting. Um, these are absolutely perfect. Um, so you're going to get that real detail. Again, these are perfect for right or left-handed use. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether you're right or left-handed, these are going to work for you. Again, you've got the blade guard as well. Oh, they are absolutely gorgeous. Really, really gorgeous. Right, and then the last pair that we've got from her are curved blades. So it's a small curved blade. So just have a look at those. Now, they do look a little bit like children's scissors, don't they? But trust me, they're not. They are absolutely super sharp. And they have, I don't know if you can see this from the side, but they have a curved blade. Okay, so these are designed to be able to get right close to fabric. So that when you're cutting threads, trimming threads in particular. So if you do things like machine applique, machine embroidery, these are the Rolls Royce of thread trimming scissors. Absolutely beautiful. Um, Karen K. Buckley scissors are fabulous and don't leave the house, Sue, in Kent. I totally agree with you. I do bring mine here, but every single time I take them home, I'm like, where are my scissors? Get them out, put them back where they belong. And I'm not like that about anything else, but they're so, so beautiful. They really are. If you've never used Karen K. Buckley scissors before, I urge you to give them a try today. If you can, I would go for the large pair because they are going to be so, so useful. You can, of course, use these for trimming threads at your machine, but these are going to be particularly useful for things like cutting out your appliques. If you do things like hand piecing as well, you'll be able to cut your templates out really precisely. Um, but it's just the grip as you're cutting as well. They're absolutely superb. Am I allowed to take them out? Yeah, good. I love doing that because then I think there's a possibility that I might get to keep them. Now, could I have a bit of fabric, please? I'll just see if we've got any. I just want to show, they, oh. And you know when you use something of real quality and it just feels totally different? Um, that's what you're getting with these Karen K. Buckley scissors. They just, they feel different in your hands. Oh, I know, it is the, the sound and the feel. I'll just show you quickly as well. That's the guard, and you want to keep that, keep that safe and keep them with them all the time. It protects that point. Um, but yeah, these are just beautiful. Oh, yum. It's so, it's so precise. It's absolutely... It is absolute perfection. Just gorgeous. So crisp, so precise. So whether you're doing hand applique, machine applique, cutting out templates, it's just perfect. I, I would be as bold as to say you, you won't find a better pair of scissors like this. They are superb. Victoria Carrington is in the studio, nodding vigorously. Have you got Karen K. Yeah, Buckley's? All the sizes. They're amazing. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? You can't just have one. Um, all the sizes got money bags. Someone's flush. Hey, I'll be asking for a loan later. Honestly, beautiful, beautiful scissors. You know there's something of quality. The minute you put them in your hands, they are just glorious. Now that's the large pair, and these are a good multi-purpose scissor. And then we've got two options in the smaller sizes. Now, if you do a lot of machine embroidery, machine applique, I would go with these ones, the curved. If you've gone for the Brother embroidery machine recently, or you've got an embroidery machine, these are perfect. If you do like lots of heavy stitching, embellishing, and actually for machine quilting as well, when you're getting in there to trim your threads, absolutely perfect. They're gonna snip through those threads perfectly, um, and they're curved so you can get right down against your fabric, against your quilt, uh, just superb. And also, of course, 
if you've got your work under your machine, under the needle, you can just obviously stop sewing, lift your presser foot and you can get right under to clip your threads. You still get your little protective uh, cover as well. So that's those. And then we've also got the multi-purpose small. And these are the green handle pair. And again, for that kind of precision detailing. So if you do things, yeah, again, like a plique, perhaps where you need to snip into curves or for dressmaking, for clipping out notches. Absolutely beautiful, just gorgeous. Oh, we have a message. Morning Stuart, love these scissors, great to have them on Sewing Street, as Hubby used mine in his workshop. All in, all in. I'm guessing that didn't end so well. Yeah, another message, good morning Stuart and crew, fantastic to see good scissors for lefties. Yes, that's the great thing about Karen's scissors, they're all suitable for right and left handed use. Brill. Okay, we're going to go to a little break. When we come back, we'll have Victoria Carrington here and this magnificent Tula Pink quilt right behind me. I'll see you after this. Hello, I'm Catherine Wright from Leicestershire Craft Centre based in Market Harborough. I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street family. I've been sewing since the age of seven when my mum taught me to sew. I particularly enjoy dressmaking and all through my childhood I made my own clothes uh, including dancing costumes and my prom dresses. But I also enjoy patchwork and bag making and hand stitching and embroidery and really anything textile based. The thing I particularly love about fabric and textiles and stitching is that there is always something new to try, there's always a new technique or a new skill to learn uh, and I really enjoy doing that. My top tip for new sewers is to uh, be friends with your iron. Your sewing also always looks better when it's been pressed and it's not like ironing your own clothes. It's much more, much better than that. And also to uh, build your skills up step by step. Don't launch in with the, with the wedding dress first off. You know, start with a simple dress and build your skills up and then you'll see good results right from the start and feel enthusiastic and carry on sewing. So really, just have a go, have fun. It's all about having fun and enjoying it. Um, so happy sewing. Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7 full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one P&P all day. Miss 
the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Hi, welcome back. I'm Stuart Hillard. Welcome to Sewing Street. Now in this hour, we've got the fancy, fantasy quilt from Tula Pink and the wonderful Victoria Carrington. Hey! <laughs> it's really lovely to see you. It's and been you. Seeing you for ages. ages. I don't think I've seen you here. Not no, together. No. I think it was the old studio. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Just months. I know. How have you been? Yeah, all right, thanks. Doing good? Yeah. Fancy fantasy. I know. It's a whopper, isn't it? it? And a corker of a quilt. Yeah, yeah. Fabulous. Dazzling. Yeah. Not beginner level. No. But equally, don't need to be daunted by this, do we? No, no. Because once you've, once you've got the hang of it, like once you've clocked with what's going on in the yeah. pattern, then it's really, really straightforward. Are we cutting individual diamonds? Are we piecing individual diamonds no, together? No, doing it in strips. Fab. So we're cutting strips, we're strip piecing. Yeah. Exactly. Victoria's going to give us a full demo of how to make the, what's well, essentially, it's a lone star, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you've ever wanted to make a lone star quilt and been put off by the idea of piecing diamonds or strip piecing, stay tuned. It's going to be demystified by the end of the hour. Now, let me show you what you get in this fabulous kit. Now then, it is a big, big quilt. It's actually 215 centimetres square now then i wonder if we can just work out what that is in inches 86. please 86 oh you are good 86 inches square so that's going to be really generous on top of a double or a queen size bed now in your quilt kit you're getting everything that you're going to need to create the top and also the binding you get your full instructions and as victoria said no individual cutting of diamonds. You're going to cut strips with your rotary cutter and ruler, or if you've got stripology, that would help. Um, and then you're going to piece those long strips together to make the diamonds. We're going to do a little bit of Y seam action. Yep. Again, nothing to be afraid of. Now, our current price, $249.99. Let me show you what you're getting for that. You get a lot of lovely fabric. I'm just going to reach in. Oh, I love these kits from Free Spirit. You get so much in the kit. Let me just show you. So you've got this big old pile of beautiful fabrics. Now we're going to drop that price. Fab. So is that £50 saving? Absolutely fab. £199.99. Now, you got split pays, 66, 66. I would take them for this. I would definitely take them. Um, because 66, 66 is all you need to pay to get the quilt kit home and crack on and enjoy making it. It is abs oops, absolutely stunning. You've got your uh, McCoy later. Love that. <laughs> Love the name she gives to her prints. That's a beautiful one. <clears throat> Gorgeous flamingos. There's the pink colourway. Okay, gorgeous butterflies on lime green. Exotic fruits. More of the McCoy later. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. It's such a lovely, sunny, warm palette. All those gorgeous pinks, oranges. 
yellows. Love that one with the little rainbow. This is beautiful. This is like an ombre fabric. So this one, I'll just hold this up actually, because it's really stunning. So this one actually grades. It's an ombre from dark to light in the middle and then back out again. Isn't that fabulous? Yeah. So that adds loads of variety to the quilt, doesn't it? And that's and the purple one of that version mm. is used for the binding, so it goes oh, dark and white. Oh, that's special. I really yeah. like that. Absolutely fab. So you get that. Uh, there's that wonderful. Now this one's called Mick Jaguar, isn't it? Mick Jaguar. Love that. Yeah, the actual fabric's called Mick Jaguar. Yeah. And then this is the purple and pink. Oh, so this is, so we get all of this, a little bit for the piecing, <coughs> but also for the binding. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Wow. Wow. That is incredible. That is stunning. Of course, quilts don't just have to be for beds. If you've got a wall big enough, you could hang this up like we have in the studio. It makes the most incredible piece of wall art, doesn't it? Um, and then more butterflies. And then this is going to be for our setting squares and triangles. Now, our current price, $199.99. Now, we've already dropped that price from $249.99. But you know what? I think we can do a little bit better. Can't we? Can we? Come on. Can we? Have I said the wrong thing? I'm going to get in trouble now. Go on. Thank you. Yay, that's better. That's more like it. That's 70 pounds off. That's good, isn't it? That's 70 pounds off. That's more than one of your split pays. Your split pays are now 59.99. Three split pays to get that quilt. Now remember, you only have to pay one of them and you get the quilt kit home. That is great. Three, and one P and P, 3.95. You just have to pay it once. If you already bought our early bird, you've already paid your P and P. That is amazing. If you've got the Karen K Buckley scissors, well done you. And they are flying out the door. One of your favorite products, right? Yeah, definitely. Karen yeah. K Buckley. Yeah. And, and just to prove it. I've got mine. There they are. <laughs> They're not leaving your hands, no, are they? No. no. I've got my name written on them and everything. <laughs> and they were sharp as when I first bought them, which was years ago. So Seriously? Yeah. yeah. See, that's great, isn't it? That's what we need, you know, really good quality tools that last. Yeah. And, you know, uh, they are superb. Yeah. They are superb. And it's better than having to, so paying a little bit more for quality is yeah. better than buying three three pairs that you or more yeah exactly and that lasts true. for ages absolutely yeah. ages i remember being at a workshop and talk i gave earlier on in the year and it was like the karen k buckley scissor club because i started <laughs> talking about uh, i was using them and i said oh these scissors i just absolutely love them deputy joan bought me uh, a pair for my birthday and suddenly there was like half of the people in the class went oh no I've got them I've got them and yeah. they were all rushing to their tables and bringing them back and say look I've got this pair and I've got that pair and <laughs> there was a lot of love for Karen K Buckley scissors yeah um what a fantastic deal we've managed to do we'll probably get in terrible trouble for doing it but we've taken 70 pounds off the Tula Pink fancy fantasy quilt it's 179.99 it should be 249.99 you get masses of fabric in there well done if you've already managed to get yours lots of you already checked out on that now then next up we're going to have a look <coughs> at the Tula Sunrise uh, thread collection for Orophil now then this is one of Tula's thread collections she's done quite a few and this is a beautiful one absolutely gorgeous Tula Sunrise it is stunning you definitely want to keep the box when you've taken the thread out look at that 
the presentation is absolutely superb isn't it really beautiful so if you're buying this as a gift for somebody um, you really are getting something very special now I'm just going to take out the threads it's always slightly difficult without overhead but I might just move over so that I can use Victoria's overhead for a second because those are such beautiful colours. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to pop them into the box. Big hands, you say? Yeah, big capable hands. Right, there we go. Right, let me just show you this because that is stunning, isn't it? Mm, Look lovely. at those. Ooh. There's something about a box of threads, isn't there, yeah. Victoria? There's a colour for everything. And there's all those there. colours in all of these fabrics as well, isn't there? there? So you could there choose are. whichever one you wanted for quilting it, or use yeah. multiple ones. Yeah, I think I'd combine. I'd use yeah. lots of different colours. Yeah. Might even do, you know, just maybe use some of the greens in the centre, and then through to the yellows and oranges, and then use those kind of pinks and purples in the outside. Yeah. And then probably these lilac-y shades in the setting squares. Oh, absolutely beautiful, 66.99. Now you know we did something a little bit ridiculous with the quilt kit. Let's do something a little bit ridiculous with these threads too. Let's drop the price to 54.99. You know it makes sense. Come on, just have fun with it. Trying to convince, I don't know why, but Charlie, our director, is like Jiminy Cricket today. It's like being everyone's conscience. Saying, no, you can't do that. You can't just like, you know, just direct. <laughs> <laughs> they are beautiful. Come on, I'm an encourager. I just want everyone to have the good stuff. Beautiful. You are also getting that ivory and black as well. Just beautiful thread collection. You get 20 50 weight spools. And each one of those spools, by the way, has <coughs> 220 yards in each. So that's a lot of thread. It's a lot of thread. Oh, yummy. I've licked that, so I'm afraid it's going to have to go <laughs> in my car now. I try this every time, Victoria, I never get anything. <laughs> I know, I know. It's awful, isn't it? You can't take me anywhere. <laughs> oh, well, I might put those back later. I might not. I might just keep them. Right, OK, <laughs> keep going through for your tulip pink threads. And also for that incredible fancy fantasy quilt kit. Now, should we get started? I think we should get started. Okay. Victoria. Hello. Hello. Right. Tell me, where do we, we get go. started on this? Okay, so basically, um, you, another thing I was going to mention as well is you get quite a few nice sized bits of scraps left. Oh, lovely. Um, so they're really generous with the fabric, which is good. Um, okay, so the pattern. <coughs> I need to move on to my mark. Thank okay. you. Okay, so as you can see, it's just that, so, which is good. So once you've got the hang of the the um the technique and then it's it's pretty straightforward to make mm -hmm. um so the cutting instructions they are super easy i whiz through the cutting because it's literally mainly just all the same width strips perfect um so that's really straightforward and then when you cut the strip sets on the diagonal that's the same width as well so it's oh. pretty uh, pretty much of a no-brainer so that's so good regular quilt ruler stripology. yeah yeah, yeah. um I use the regular ruler, um, but yeah, you can use a stripology. Um, and then also, you just need to make sure you've got a 45 degree line on your ruler as Perfect. well. Perfect. Okay. Um, and then it's obviously got like the table, which shows your fabric placement, um, and then shows you how to join it together at the end. Okay. Okay. So, I'll just refer to that because I need it for the fabric placement. So, what I would say is um, it's best to, once you've. Um, once you open your box is label them all up so you know which is fabric A, B, C, which is really straightforward. And then as you're cutting them, just keep the letter along with your bundles of strips like I've done there, which just makes mm. it easier to, because if obviously there's a, 
a pattern that goes, so they go like in circular fabric positioning. Yes. So, um, so yeah, you want to make sure you've got the right thing in the right place. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. But the see. truth of the matter is, because I mean, it, you know, to the to the untrained eye, and I yeah. think about myself when I made my first quilt trip around the world. I just started with the square in the centre and started sewing outwards. Yeah didn't think about long lines but actually from here to here is a strip set isn't it yeah. this line here is a strip yeah. set and then from here to here is another strip set yeah and so on yeah and we're just building up these strip sets yeah so each time you just add a add another fabric onto the next strip set and take mm -hmm. one off the bottom so so that's how you get that sort of oh, effect that sounds easy yeah. okay okay so I've got my, I've cut some strips and um, so the diagram for this, your first strip set is here. So all I'm going to do is um, position these. Now yours will be full length but I've just done them half length just so I can demonstrate better. Okay so the first one's H and then we're going to do G. So what I did is I just lined them all up like this in kind of a offset I was going to say, does it matter that the ends aren't lined up? No. Like, what you've got to do is offset them so you get less fabric wastage. Ah. So, because if they were all level, then you'd cut your 45 degree and then you'd have all of this wastage. Like a triangle. So, yeah, uh -huh. exactly. So, I'll just show you with these four bits. So, let's take that off there. Because I've laid them out now, so I know which order I'm going in. Mm-hmm. On there. It's actually a very, very simple way of piecing a quilt, this isn't it? Yeah. You just there's a couple of perhaps new skills to learn. Yeah, yeah. And it's just because um some of it's cut on the bias. Well, when when you're putting it together, yeah. um there's there's some bias edges, but that yeah. actually helps matters a lot of people say, Oh god, oh blimey. Um it'll all be all out of shape and whatever, mm. but because you can ease it, mm. it does make it easier to mm. add the corners on and stuff. Mm -hmm. Right, so what I did is I lined my selvage edge against a line on my board, and then you have to offset this by two and a quarter inches, okay? So I just popped that there, so I've got one, two and a quarter inches, and I just literally eyeballed it, I mm -hmm. didn't measure it, mm -hmm. okay? Now, um, it doesn't really say in the pattern what to do about the selvage, but I just use the 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 edge of the selvage. So don't think, oh, I'm, uh, is that going to be a problem? Because it won't be. Because mm. you've got plenty of length on it. You can count the selvage in with your two and a quarter. Yeah, Perfect. exactly. Perfect. So what you do then is you flip that over like that. So you've got your overhang on the end there. And then we're just going to stitch along there a quarter of an inch seam. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Normal stitch length. Yeah, so I do patchwork stitch length 1.8. What do you what would you do? Same here. Yeah. Yeah. I do a lot of mine on the Elna 680. Yeah. Is that the machine you use? Is that what yes. you're using yeah. now, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm not gonna sew it all because that's really boring. Um <gasps> So, and then what you do is you, um, so the one you've just added, you press towards the one you've just added. So you do that throughout. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then that makes it easier to join together at the end. So okay. I'll just do that. Okay, and you wanna make sure that you've got nice crisp edges. So you wanna set your seam first, which I didn't do then. So set your seam, which knits your stitches together open it out and make sure you haven't got any like little pleats in it because that will affect how they join together yeah. later. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then so for the next one again, you just line that up with a line on your mat and then attach that one in exactly the same way and you just keep going with your eight strips. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's always eight strips? Yes. Cool. There's eight strips in a set and there's eight strip sets. Gotcha. So that's good. Right, so once you've done that, you will have 
Oh, that's beautiful. Look at those gorgeous fabrics. Okay. Right. So this is this again. This is half the half the width that you'll have. Mm. Okay. So what we need to do now is we're going to, and it makes it quite easy that it's like this because you know which direction you've got to cut in, mm. and where are you not thinking? Oh, does it need to be that way or that way? It just it's obvious, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, right. Now, because I'm left-handed, um, I sometimes have to swivel it round to get my ruler mm. marks going the right way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So I'm taking my. I should have bought another ruler. I've got another ruler in here. I'm sure. Uh, uh, how long a ruler do you need? Um, Oh, not massively long, just a small I mean, I've one. I've got another, another Yeah, one that's of those. great. So what I did at home was to, to save, keep like moving the ruler up, mm. I just joined two rulers together. They don't mm -hmm. have to be the same size, they can, it can be a smaller one, mm. but just to take you to there. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're, can you see, am I in the wrong place here? Presumably as well. I mean, I know you've lined up your 45 degree with the raw edge. Yeah. But you could line that up with one of the seams, couldn't you? Yeah, definitely. That would yeah, work. Yeah. You could do it like that or however you wanted to do it. Whatever you find easiest. Yeah. Okay. So I'll line that up there. And then when you're at home as well, um, if you do cutting in different directions and stuff, you can always just leave the fabric as it is and cut and move round the table mm -hmm. to cut. Because I think that's what people get a bit confused with sometimes. Yeah. Okay, and I'm just going to join that to there. Well, I know it's difficult to do, and I don't always I don't always do it myself. But if you can clear the decks. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I know a lot of us work on the kitchen table. Yeah. But get rid of the vase of flowers. Get rid of the mug of tea and all those other yeah, bits and bobs. Definitely. <laughs> um, <laughs> it just does make it easier, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Get the cat off the sewing machine. Correct. Yes. Right. Okay. So you've got your edge like that. So um, then what we're going to do is. If you, obviously, if you're right-handed, you'll be cutting the other way, won't mm -hmm. you? So, okay, and I'm just going to do so. The all these strip sets are cut exactly the same, so they're two and three quarter inches. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do that like that. Yeah. And then you've got your strip set. Ah, okay. So you cut eight of those mm -hmm. out of your width, and then you've got obviously you'll have eight different strip sets. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then what you do is put those out of the way. So again, you want to be labelling up your strip sets so you don't get yourself confused. Mm. So let me get my diagram. <sighs> okay, so this diagram shows. So it shows you strip set one there, strip set two there. So it's all really clear. Oh, what and you I need like to the do fact as well that you've got a bit of an idea of colour there as yeah, well, haven't you? Exactly. So you can do a visual check to see if you've got it in the right yeah, place. Yeah, because you've got all your kind of like reds and pinks up here, and then you've got your cool tones down there. Mm -hmm. So kind of is an extra visual check on it really but label 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 yeah yeah it just takes the stress out of it doesn't it and my top tip would be don't rely on the glue on post-it notes Correct. Oh, I've had yeah. so many people come to class and they've labeled every bit for their bag with a post-it oh. note and they just fall off yeah to so always pin it as well yeah. yeah well I've done it myself we learn the hard way sometimes yeah. but you won't do it again will you no <laughs> no so as you can see so then it starts creating this kind of diagonal pattern. I see that. So you'd add all of your eight strip sets on. Let's just move these 
before I get confused. So the good news so far, we've cut straight of grain strips. We've sewn them together. So far, so piece of cake. Yeah. Then we've cross cut strip sets. Again, absolute piece of cake. The only difference is rather than having that ruler straight, we've got it at a 45 degree angle. So again, just take your time, line everything up, cut your strips and we're all good. So again, nothing to be alarmed about. No. Nope. This is just taking your regular rotary cutting and strip piecing skills and taking them one step further. This is not a big leap forward. Yeah. One, but this two, is on three, every four, quilter's five. bucket list, I think. The Lone Star quilt. Yeah. It's so iconic. Uh, very traditional kind of quilt, Lone Star or Bethlehem Star. Like a lot of quilt blocks have different names sometimes. Um, oh, that's looking amazing. So, just trying to see. I think the key to this is just, just be organised. And if you're. Mm. Um, you could always lay these, when you're doing them, you could always lay them out on a piece of wadding and then when you come, if you need to stop halfway through, you yeah, can yeah, just yeah. fold the wadding up and everything stays in position rather than having to mix everything up. Yeah. Or in my house, it would just be no one's getting fed, we're having takeaway. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> stopping. I'm on a roll. <laughs> Are you like that when you're working though? Yeah. You're just like, I'm on a roll. Yeah. Don't talk to me. Yeah. But I, mine gets broken up with uh, school runs. Of course it That's does. my stop yeah. and start time. I'll just ring the school and say I'm not coming in. I know. In, I'm in I the have middle. considered it. I have middle of a quilt. <laughs> 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 okay, so what we're going to do now is. Now, this is the. This is, this is the bit. Okay. So you might not be able to see this very well on the sewing machine, so I'll just show you here. that under there so you can see the end okay so you need a quarter of an inch poking out the end there okay mm -hmm. and the quarter of an inch is from the middle of the side raw seam to that little point of that triangle there so it's not that bit and it's not that bit it's across okay oh like there yeah gotcha yeah okay and then, because obviously these are these are, these are bias seams, so you don't want to be you don't want to be pulling it like crazy because it will stretch. But obviously, you can adjust where your quarter of an inch seam mm. is going to fall. So um, obviously, we're not like robots or machines, so we're not going to get it exactly smack on every time. Mm -hmm. um, but because it's so busy, you can't even see it anyway. So. No. So it makes, but obviously you want to do it to, to the best you can. Yeah. So what I, the way I did it was I put my finger nail where I'm judging a quarter of an inch seam. Okay. So you start off on the sewing machine and you start sewing a quarter of an inch. Okay. And then I stopped about there. Then I put my finger where about quarter of an inch is along that stitch line. Mm-hmm. And then I flipped it open to see where the join was. So you can either move it up or move it down, move the top bit or the bottom bit to get that seam. So when you when you op open it up and press it, it's kind of all level. Yes. Yeah. Right. You can put a pin through as well, can't you? Just yeah. to line up. Yeah, you can. The thing that's slightly different when you're joining diamonds, of course, is like when you're just joining a row of st strips like squares to another strip set of squares together you have your seam intersections together right at the very edge of the seam and that and if you did that with 45 degree angle cut then nothing would be lined up you've got to offset every seam by a quarter of an inch so they're just offset so that when you sew the seam the quarter inch is right where the seams intersect. So it's, yeah. that is one slightly different skill, but you've plenty of opportunity to perfect it. Yeah. And you could always as well go into your stash and cut a few strips first, couldn't you? Yeah, definitely, definitely. You, I mean, I didn't pick this up and immediately think, oh, I know how to, how to do these seams together. Because it's just trial and error, isn't it, with everything? Yeah, it really is. 
And if you want to practice this as well, don't feel like you've got to make a whole eight loads of strip sets. Just sew three strips together, and they could be any width. Sew them together, cut them at a 45 degree angle, make several. I mean, they could all be calico. They'd have to be different fabrics even. And then just practice sewing them together and getting those 45 degree angles to match. And before you know it, you'll feel confident, you'll know exactly where to place the fabric. So you can see Victoria now whizzing through this. And then you will create those beautiful pieced diamonds without actually cutting diamonds. Now, why? <laughs> oh, how we doing? Yeah, are we happy? So, oh, look at that. Look at that. It's pretty good. I spent a lot hey, of time doing that. Come here. Look at that. Look at that. That's what we like. Looking good. That's a high five. Nice one. <laughs> Quit while I've you're ahead, Victoria. <laughs> Quit while you're ahead. Okay, brilliant. So, you continue adding your strip sets and then you get this. Oh, now another thing I was going to mention, which mm -hmm. is quite important. Because I think in patchwork, you, oh, sometimes you can think, you can think, oh, that'll do. Mm -hmm. And then later on, you can come a bit unstuck, it can't you? It bites you in the bum. Yeah, yeah. So what you want to do, I haven't trimmed this down or anything, but you need to make sure. So we know about the, the quarter of an inch at the top. So your one side will always be fine because of that. Um, but as you get down to the bottom, you need to make sure these pieces are level. Because when you come to add your um, setting triangles and your corners on, um, if these aren't level, you're gonna have a bit of an issue with right. your um, quarter of an inch seam. So if one's like quarter of an inch shorter, yep. then you're gonna struggle a bit. So it's just a case of just taking your time and doing it properly. Pinning. Yeah. Pin the ends. Yeah. Make sure everything's nice and flat. Yeah. So what I probably do is maybe sew a few and then just ease in the bottom mm -hmm. to make sure that was pin it and then I can I know where I've got to be aiming for. The colours in that quilt are sensational. No, they're aren't lovely, they? aren't they? Yeah. I absolutely love that. I mean this is a magnificent quilt and you know, a magnificent quilt is always, and I think it's fair to say always, going to take a little bit more time, a little bit more trouble, and yeah. perhaps an extra skill that you may not have at the moment and want to practice. It's a great opportunity. The results yeah. speak for themselves, don't yeah, they? definitely. It's all about getting that wow factor. Yeah. Okay. So, then what... So then what you do, so you've done all these, so you've made all your segments for the star. Is that when we have the pina colada? I should you think you'd probably, yeah. <laughs> you'd probably want to, wouldn't you? Yeah. By the time you'll be feeling smug, you'll be feeling content, you'll be feeling like, come on, I am <laughs> the kiddie. Yeah, so, you know, have a bar of chocolate or, you know, whatever, treat yourself. Yeah, yeah, Good. definitely. I'm just thinking what would appeal to me. <laughs> I'm thinking cocktail of a bar of chocolate, right, good. Okay, so you cut your four squares for mm -hmm. the corners. And then from, so these setting squares are cut from one big square. I think it's 37 and a half inches. Um, so that's not, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, is it, to cut a piece that big. Right. Um, and I, you, so the way I do it is, Fold your fabric in half and use the half measurements and use your mat as well. Yeah. Um, because if you start using like a tape measure, you're not going to get no. an accurate result. So no. that's when your mat comes in useful, isn't it? Mm. Um, so. But also our ruler, our, our ruler that typically that we use is 24 inches long. If we folded the fabric into quarters, we're only measuring out less than 20 inches. Yeah. So we've got more than enough on our ruler. Yeah. I showed the other day, I think it was last Wednesday when I was on with John, how to cut a large square using a regular yeah, ruler. Yeah. So it was yeah. when I did the woodland, Effie's woodland, if you want to watch that. Yeah, back. that would be good to watch if you're doing this. Um, so in order for, so, so these four are cut from one square, the triangles, mm -hmm. and that make, so that gives you the straight edge across the top 
and the bias edges are here mm -hmm. because you don't want a biased edge on the edge of your quilt no. otherwise it's all so those are quarter square triangles yeah yeah and when you're putting it together you obviously need to think about the placement of the fabric because it's directional you don't want your jaguars upside down and right all that sort of thing so that's just a point to mention but that's another reason why you would cut them as quarter square triangles and then you'll get four perfectly placed with yeah. the pattern the right way around yeah awesome oh, we've got a nice message from sharon who's in the vale of glamorgan good morning sharon uh, morning victoria and stewart morning. happy sunday love this quilt <laughs> uh would using best press be good to use would that be a good idea yeah i suppose so yeah, yeah. Like to pre sort yeah. of firm up the fabrics. it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Not a bad idea at yeah. all. I like that, Sharon. That's good. Obviously, right. do that with your fabrics before you start cutting your strips so that they're stable right yeah. from the get go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, obviously, these bits are a bit big to demonstrate. So, mm. I've made a smaller example to show oh, how fantastic. we're going to put the Y seams in. Mm hmm. So I've come up with these sizes myself, so whether they're right or not, I don't know, we'll have to find <laughs> out. <laughs> okay, so first of all, we are going to, oh, I oh, right, okay. So you need to mark out, could you pass me a ruler please? I certainly can. Thank you. Thank you. So we need to mark out um, some little dots which are of a quarter of an inch in each of the corners of all of the shapes. So the way I did that was lined my ruler up against the raw edge and then I just did a little line on each corner so I get like a V where those um, oh, I points see. should be. Mm -hmm. So again... So if in doubt, mark the points, mark your seam allowances, yeah, and then you'll get a more accurate result. Yeah, definitely. Good advice. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Lynn's got in touch. Good Hello, morning, Lynn. Lynn. What great demos this morning. Thank Such you. detailed explanations from both Victoria and you too, Aww. Stuart. Victoria is also a very talented artist. Oh, thanks. You, ah. <laughs> And, of course, if you love Victoria Carrington's designs, stay tuned because at 11 o'clock you've got six of your designs, yeah, haven't you? Yeah. And you're going to be giving us demos of whistle, all of them. Whistle stop. Whistle stop. I love it. Right then. So I've done, I've done all that on all of my pieces and I've also done them on my corner squares and my setting triangles mm -hmm. as well. Okay. So you do, do all those. And we'd mark those on the wrong side. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to... So you start off doing it sort of in quarters. Right. So the first thing we're going to do is join these two together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Right sides together. And in a way, even though these are, you know, very large units, you're effectively making one block. Yeah. Yeah. So, although there's lots of steps, and you'll take your time working on each unit, you're only making eight units, plus the corners and the, and yeah. then one block and you're done. It's a, spe it's a different kind of quilt for lots, for lots of us yeah. who've always made sort of block by block quilts. Yes, yeah, definitely. Okay, so I'm just going to, so I'm going to stitch, so from that where that intersects there. So you're not stitching across the seam allowance. You're literally starting there. I went down, back stitched a couple of stitches and then carried on going down to that point, not into the seam allowance and then back just to secure the ends, okay? So you backstitch at the start and the finish, did yeah. you? Yeah, perfect. Okay. 
See, I even recommend marking the seam allowance on squares if you're brand new to yeah. piecing. Yeah. Well, I did anyway, so yeah. for, for, and I've like... Nothing wrong with doing that. No. Anything that supports you in getting the accuracy and the yeah. ease that you want, do it. And on something like this, it's essential for all of us, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, one thing I was going to mention about this. So when you're piecing these together, um, because I haven't obviously got any seams on my example here. So we've got green in the middle, haven't we? So again, when you're joining those, because you're going to do that, um, these like these nestle together. Mm -hmm. So you've got no worries about having to do that 45 degree angle thing again and putting your finger there because it just nestles together and just oh. joins together like a dream. Oh, hurrah! Yeah. Oh, that's nice to know. Yeah. So once you made your diamonds, it's easy sailing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. And because they're big bits, they don't come together really quickly. Mm. And they're a bit more forgiving when they're big, aren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Do it this way. Right, so I've got my right sides up. Now, at this point, I didn't, I didn't press the seams because I didn't want to be, I didn't want to commit myself to, mm -hmm. uh, to where it was. I've gone a bit far on that one. I've got, see, I've gone over my point, my um, my mark there, which then is gonna, which then causes you more problems further mm. along because you haven't got as much seam. Okay, I'm sure it'll be all right. So basically, here, this is where your threads stop. So you've got this bit that's open here. Okay. So what we then do is take our square. So again, make sure you've got it round the right way. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put that, that's right, isn't it? Wrong sides down. So what you need to do is make sure that that point there, where you've got your intersection for your quarter of an inch seam, yeah. goes exactly on where that fabric opens up. So your last stitch, mm -hmm. they're, they, they're kind of on top of, like, level. Mm. Okay, and I'm just going to pin that. And again, you could push a pin straight through, couldn't yeah. you, to find, if you want to find the exact spot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then what you need to do is make sure, so this is when I do that, Stuart, definitely. Um, you want to push your, oh, there we go. Um, so you want these points that you've marked here, those need to meet as well, and they'd be in exactly the same spot. So if you poke in, poke a pin through now I can see there that that's not coming out where I want mm -hmm. it to so I just need to just adjust where that is and then I can ease it in got you okay so again pin that in and then I'll just do one in the middle See, when I first started doing patchwork, I thought pinning wasn't cool, Victoria. Yeah. It's like, oh, no, nah, I'm like, I'm not doing that. Yes. Yeah. Boring, boring. What a waste of time. I'll just like, be all right. But you <laughs> learn, don't you, actually? It's yeah. like quite useful. Some, some, <laughs> it, sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad because you don't have the flexibility sometimes, yeah, do yeah, you, yeah. once you've pinned it. Um, but, right, okay, so... Lovely message for you just before you go on from Beverly. Morning, Victoria. Morning. And Stuart, well done, Victoria, for not only making Aww. a gorgeous quilt, but also for all your preparation <laughs> peaches. Such a lot of work. It did take a, did take a bit of time, yeah. I have to say. But it, it's good fun. It's, yeah. And because they're nice fabrics and all different, it makes it, like, more interesting, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm just going to make sure my seams here are just pushed back, and then I'm just going to stitch from that mark on the corner down to the other mark on the corner. So I'm mm -hmm. not going into the seam allowance again. Now there's no pattern available on its own, I'm afraid. We'll 
lots of you have requested that we'll pass that message on but right now the only way you can get this is to get the kit and what a glorious collection of fabrics it is too all from Tula Pink you're making a 70 pound saving today um, if you've joined us sort of midway through the show the original price of this Tula Pink uh, fancy fantasy quilt kit was $249.99 we have dropped the price to $179.99 which means that you're only paying $59.99 today if you want to take advantage of the split pays now you get all the fabric to create the quilt top and also the binding you just need to add a backing of your choice and obviously your thread we have got backing fabrics on the web my top tip for that would be VN41 that's this one right here which is actually from the same range and it's perfect absolutely perfect designed by oh, Tula yeah, Pink awesome. it's gorgeous yeah. isn't it <laughs> absolutely fabulous so I would go for that for backing it and um, your finished quilt itself is 86 inches square so depending on how you quilt you want to make sure that you're getting at least I would say at least 95 inches in terms of your length so what's that three meters perfect yep okay so we've got that, that seam there so we've got these two loose seams here that we're mm -hmm. now going to join together okay so then I'm going to flip that that way I quite enjoy doing it because a lot of people think oh why seams mm. but I actually quite enjoyed doing this it was yeah. okay so I'm going to turn it over for this one so again I'm making sure my points are nice and f my um joints are nice and flat and then I need to make sure that these two pieces here mm -hmm. the spots here are level I think it's the Y seam, it's one of those skills. We've become a bit de-skilled in patchwork yeah. from doing this. If you're a bag maker or a dressmaker, there won't be anything scary to you or unusual about a Y seam yeah. or about the concept of not sewing straight off the end of the fabric. If you've always done strip piecing, rotary cut, you know, a patchwork, then it becomes something that's a bit different and a bit, why am I doing this? But actually, yeah well, a lot of us do it anyway it's, it's a very yeah. easy thing to do and the thing is as well it, it kind of it, it neatens it up a bit doesn't it because mm. normally if you weren't doing a Y seam you'd have that cut so you'd have another seam there mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. obviously your patterns wouldn't match right so that's what that's what sort of gives you that really and you'd have to do the same through the center as well wouldn't yeah you? exactly yeah which would spoil it a bit with that it pattern. Would. okay so again I'm just going to take so from here down to the bottom and not going through the um, seam allowances. Oh, Jan's messaged in. I'm not sure it is the aircon you can hear. Jan says, is the aircon working double overtime? I'm presuming it's that I can hear, especially when neither Stuart nor Victoria is speaking. Are you getting a little bit of little bit of sound in the background Jan we well, can't hear it in the studio but we'll check it definitely oh no actually I think you might be right I think it is the aircon Jan I think it is I don't hear it so much because I've got my earpiece in and all I can hear are the dulcet tones of our director and producer. <laughs> but I think you might be right, Jen, well spotted. It is working double overtime because it is so warm. It is really hot. Did you get any sleep last night? It, when, when, I, when I go, um, when I'm coming here, yeah. I can, I'm awake till like 11 o'clock at night. Right. When I'm not coming here, I'm asleep at eight, so. What's that about? Is, it, is that excitement? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there we go. That's immaculate. Yep. Look at that. So then you just press that. Um, and obviously you're gonna have all 
seams across here so I press that towards the square fabric right okay so then what you do is too you really did do a lot of prep my goodness well, me Oh, there's no way I'm coming on here to show people what to do, having not done it myself and no, 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 winging of course it not, on the day. Or no, but this crikey. is what's so great about having you here because you really are showing us every step. Because this is a quilt that's a bit out of a lot of our comfort yeah, zones. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So imagine this isn't here, okay? So you've made your piece like mm -hmm. that with your corner on. Imagine that's not there and you take your other one, that's the same. You join them you join these two together here and then do exactly the same with that so triangle. we still do up to a quarter of an inch and back stitch here yeah. when we're joining these yeah. and then that leaves us the space to get that bit in exactly yeah so then when you've got so you end up with two pieces like this mm -hmm. and then you so imagine I've got another one of these mm -hmm. oh yes so imagine there's another one there yep. and then again you join those across there and then you just put in your last two triangles setting triangles easy as that happy days very happy days and I think it's fair to say another pina colada all round <laughs> thank you very much Two maybe Leslie's <laughs> got in touch hi Stuart and Victoria Hello. would the scissors with the pale green handles be suitable for hard anger and other cut thread work thanks lovely show from Leslie Leslie I'm so glad you mentioned that because yeah and actually actually I would even say well definitely the smallest ones would be perfect for hard anger i think the large ones too i mean they have got such slim sharp points so this is nac yeah 518 so that's that one and then the small ones are zn25 they're the really little ones and Leslie thank you for reminding me about things like hard anger and cut work embroidery because they would be brilliant for that because you need that real sharpness that real precision especially when you're cutting right next to threads that you want to keep or embroidery that you've already completed yeah superb we don't have the medium size green but I think these are the green ones you were talking about wasn't it Leslie these small green ones they would be really really good for that uh, lovely compliment from ja Jan for you Victoria Victoria wow those corners uh -huh. oh and you are an excellent <laughs> artist your animals look like you could reach out and stroke them <laughs> thank you Aww. thanks Jan beautiful <laughs> that's it fabulous that's it um, done it yeah, and another thing, just to mention, on the um, binding, in the instructions it says cut bias binding. Right. But obviously Pourquoi? you don't need to cut it oh, biased. No. So I've, I've just said cut it straight. And also as well, I'm just thinking about that fabric. Yeah, it works better like with that fabric as well. Because... Yeah. I mean, if you went across the bias, you would still get the ombre, yeah. but you get it across where... No, I do crosswise as well. Yeah. Because also as well, it'd be more economical. You'd have exactly. a few leftovers, yeah. which we like. Yeah. Yeah. Straight leftovers as well, not triangles. Quite, exactly. Now, um, this quilt has been quilted. I always like to try and give a tip oh, or yes. two about yeah. quilting yeah, your definitely. finished quilt. This one's been done straight line walking yeah. foot. So what what they've done is so let's take this one so so they've started there gone down so they've echo stitched it rather than stitching the ditch mm. um down to the near the center and then back out that way and they've and then the next one goes like that and then up that way so you go in you're getting shorter lengths every time so you're working on a quarter of the quilt at a time yeah and yeah. easiest way you don't need to mark those lines just get yourself some low tack 
masking tape, what they call painter's tape or, you know, yeah. for masking. And you can run a line of tape and then just stitch along the edge of the yeah. tape, can't you? Yeah. Um, but yeah, because you don't want to be like stitching in the ditch and getting all your si all your stitches in the centre there because you'll have a right mess, won't you? Mm. So, so that's quite a good way of doing it. Beautiful. Any other ways you might quilt it? Be the most straightforward way, wouldn't it? I am a we'll lover of a continuous quilted. curve. If you like free motion quilting, so what you would do there is. Um, but this would quilt every diamond. So what you would do is you would say start here and you would do a gentle curving line, curving down to the point. So you would oh, bounce good, yeah. all the way down. And then when you got to the bottom, then you would bounce to the side and up and under, over, side, under over side under so you end up with a gently curving line That's around nice, yeah. each diamond it's more work but if you like free motion quilting yeah well, you could do a combination of the two and certainly then you've got those lovely big squares in the corner where yeah you can do your uh diagonal lines you could do cross hatching yeah or you could free motion quilt something yeah there. lovely fab love it well, there are lots of these kits in baskets. Now, I do need to just let you know that Ben's reduction on the price, and I'm going to call it Ben's reduction now, <laughs> um, because I suspect um, we've done, yeah, there's been trouble probably. So I'm trying to shift the blame as much as I possibly can. Um, I don't think with this, <laughs> I don't think this price will be available tomorrow. Um, so if you do want to get hold of the kit, I would get it today um, while Ben and I still have a job and that price is still $179.99. Um, I would definitely go for that. Also don't forget we've got the fabulous Tula Sunrise uh, thread collection from Orophil. We did another mad price reduction, naughty price reduction on these. You get 20 220 yard spools. It's 50 weight, so absolutely perfect for quilting, but also really, really gorgeous for top stitching and applique as well, like blanket stitch applique. There's something about these threads, isn't there? It's like a, a box of chocolates or a bowl of fruit or... But you don't put weight on. No, you don't. No. It's just deliciousness, isn't it? You know there's something good inside when, you, when the box looks like that and then you open the box and then you've got these inside I mean everything's just beautiful I mean they make a gorgeous gift to yourself obviously <laughs> lovely absolutely lovely yeah you do you have to buy yourself nice things you deserve nice things I deserve I deserve these threads definitely <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not going to try and put them back now. I don't even want to put them back. Ben, our producer, said, don't put them back. Just have them. Just have them. <laughs> They're not his to give, Victoria. But, you know, I mean, I'll take him at his word and I'll just <laughs> pop those in my car. They can go in my Winnebago. Oh, anything could have happened, couldn't it? Um, now, we have got extra wide backing fabrics on the website too. Don't forget as well, the fabulous Karen K. Buckley scissors. Keep checking out on your Tula Pink Quilt Kit. We won't keep that price for tomorrow. I'm pretty certain of that. Grab it right now while you can make that £70 saving. It's more than your first easy pay so take advantage of that all right we're going to go to a little break you're going to go off for a little break now too yeah victoria thank you so much for Pleasure. that hour we've all learned loads Good. and um, we'll see you back at 11. lovely i will see you after this break with creative grids rulers hello my name is fiona hisford also known as so girl I'm based in Worthing on the south coast of England and I work in my lovely garden studio which is where I am right now. So uh, my sewing journey began as a child. Uh, my mother used to 
had to surround the house with Laura Ashley fabrics and wallpapers. And I used to patch together some of the scraps and uh, make little quilts for myself and uh, dolls clothes and things like that. So one of my top tips in dressmaking would be to definitely make a toile before you start. Uh, sometimes uh, if you're using expensive fabric, it's a good idea to make, some, make the garments in a sheet or a cheap fabric, just so that you're absolutely sure of the fit. An interesting fact about me is that I used to be a knitwear designer back in the 80s. And once I made a jumper for the singer Sade, which was really exciting. Uh, I worked in Paris for six years and when I came back I fell back in love with fabric again and I started working with magazines and books and writing projects for them and that led eventually on to me designing my own collection of dressmaking patterns. Uh, my philosophy is that I love comfortable clothing every day, things that are easy to make, easy to wear. I like modelling my clothes myself and I wear pretty much everything that I design. So I always think that if I feel good in them, then other people will. I've been working for Sewing Street since it's been, since, almost since it began, and I love it there. We're like one big family, and I'm on the show about every two, mo two months, and so I look forward to seeing you on the next show soon. Bye. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Call the Coast Guard, man ironing. You might want to record this bit. Look. There we go. Just getting a bit of ironing done. Now this hour, 
I'm going to get off my stool <laughs> and do a few demos. We've got Creative Grids rulers in this hour. Now there are so many fantastic Creative Grids rulers and we've got lots of them. It might be worth having a look on pre-order, you know, and just seeing what's there because we might not get through every one of them. But I'm going to demo a couple of them while we're here because I want to show you. I think sometimes you just need to see what they actually do. Now then, we're going to start off with the hexagon trim tool. Okay, let me grab this down. Oh, it's a great ruler this. Really, really cool. Now then, um, your triangle trim tool, oh, I'm going to put something light underneath it so we can see it a bit. Oh, that's not very nice. Just give me one second. I know what to do. I know what to do. Look, there we go. There we go. There we go. That's it now. How's that? There we go. Okay, right. So your triangle trim tool, for a start off, you can use this to cut hexagons out for a quilt and you can cut them at two inch finished, four inch, six inch and eight inch. So for example if you just want to make a granny's flower garden quilt then you can and you can cut out all of your hexagons. So this is like having four different hexagon templates in one. Now I'll show you how you cut the hexagons out in a second. Um, but, and, and, and actually, you know, the last demonstration from Victoria was very pertinent to this because she showed us how to sew Y seams. You can sew hexagons by hand, of course, and lots of us have done that, pieced over paper, but they are actually quite easy to sew together by machine as well. So if you've cut them out accurately using your hexagon trim tool, you can sew them together quite easily. You've also got little dots at every single intersection. You'll remember that in the last hour Victoria drew lines on the seams and where the intersections were she started and finished her seam. Well on this all you would do is use a pencil or a chalk pen or something like that, um, friction pen, to mark those dots and that's where you'll stop and start sewing your seams if you're going to piece this well by hand or machine. Um, but the other thing that you can do with your hexagon trim tool is that you can create log cabin style hexagons and I'm going to show you a little bit of that as well. So let me show you first of all how you're going to cut out a hexagon. Now let's say for example that we wanted to cut out the four and a half inch hexagon so we were going to cut uh, we we're going to piece rather a quilt using four and a half inch hexagons. Now you could of course use charm squares for this. Four and a half inch strip. So I love anything that starts off with a strip because that's nice and easy cutting. So you'll get your strips and then what you're going to do is line up now. This is our two and a half inch, two inch finished hexagon. This next one here is our four inch finished hexagon. There's a little label there. And what you're going to do is line up those two straight sides of the hexagon with the straight sides of your strip and slide it along to minimize your waist. And you can see we've got two edges now to cut. So I can get in there with my ruler, uh, with my cutter rather and I can cut those two edges off. This is starting to look like a hexagon. Flip it around and then I'm going to lay my hexagon back on top and this time I can line up four sides of the hexagon and I can cut my hexagon. And there's my perfect four inch finished hexagon. Now you could layer six to eight four and a half inch strips one on top of another so you could be cutting six hexagons at a time okay so it's a really nice efficient way of cutting out hexagons okay so that's our first sort of scale done and dusted now then if you wanted to do log excuse me log cabin style let me show you how you do that. So log cabin style is where you've got a hexagon in the centre, obviously with a log cabin you'd have a square in the centre and then sew strips around. 
Well, what we're going to start off with is a hexagon in the center, and then we're going to sew strips around it. So I'm going to start by cutting one and a half inch strip. Okay, so I've got my one and a half inch strip of fabric. And then what I want are some strips that are, well, I want three strips that are a bit longer than one of the sides. Okay, so I've done that. I've got my three little strips and I'm going to sew those on to three opposite sides, just like that. Okay, so I've got my machine set up for a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So let's do a little bit of sewing. Um, I think this is a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We'll soon find out. Okay, so make sure when you're doing this that you're sewing these on three opposite sides. Great way of using up your scraps, this one. You could feature something a bit special. Oh, we've got a slight malfunction with the machine. Just give me one second. Come unthreaded. Oh, and I've, I haven't got my glasses on. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And I don't know how to use this needle threader, so. No close ups of my face now. Oh, would you know? There we go. He's done it, he's done it, he's done it. All right. <laughs> Susan's got in touch. Go on. Morning, Stuart. Can you explain log cabin, please? Of course I can. Of course I can. Um, so log cabin. Oh, it's done it again. It's done it again. What's going on? Oh, this is using someone else's machine, isn't it? So log cabin, it's a really traditional American patchwork quilt block. And it's basically, you have a square in the center of the block and then you sew strips of fabric to the four sides and you sew them kind of around in a clockwise or anti-clockwise order. And what you tend to have is two adjacent strips are lights and two adjacent strips are darks. And you keep that going throughout as you build up your block so that you end up with a square in the center and then um, a sort of a light half and a dark half to your block. It looks really attractive. It's an absolute classic quilt block. That's better. We're cooking with gas now. Okay, smashing. I'm there, I'm there, I'm back in the room. All right, let's sew that last one on. I just like an opportunity to do a bit of sewing, it's nice. Yeah. Okay. Oh. I bet you would love that, but it's not gonna happen. Ben's just said, well, Charlie had a dream apparently where I, we had a five hour day and I demoed a new bag in every hour. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Right then, so now what I'm going to do is cut some more strips and I'm going to need to cut a bit, of, bit more of a strip off here for my three remaining sides. So let's get those cut. Just make sure that we get one and a half inch strips. So just imagine if you've got loads and loads of scraps and a one and a half inch strip is not, not a large scrap by any means. Um, and then you could make these blocks. So I'm just sort of roughly measuring out 
what I'll need. You don't have to be terribly precise with this. You just need to be longer. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is sew these strips straight across. Now what you're aiming for here, you don't have to start trimming these bits off. You just want to line up your strip with the centre part of your hexagon. And then as long as you keep it straight, it'll be in the right place as you, uh, you know, as it goes over the previous strips. So let's crack on and sew this. Because you're sewing over a strip that's already added, this is probably a time where I wouldn't use one of these feet with a guard. They don't go nicely over a piece of fabric, but it's good enough to show you what I'm doing. But personally, I'm not a fan of these feet with a, with a guard, with a seam guide on them tends to just kind of get in the way. Okay, oops, no, that's catching. Now, if there are any rulers that you would like me to demo, um, then get in touch. This machine's come and threaded again. I'd like a different machine, please, if I may. <laughs> that is one time too many. Come in unthreaded. Um, and then you're going to add your last strip across there and flip it back. Okay, so you'll end up with something that looks a bit like that. Okay, now once you've got that all added on, you're going to grab your um, hexagon trim tool again. And what you'll do this time, you've got... you've got a four inch finished hexagon that sits in the middle, okay? So you're going to use that, uh, hang on, let me just, one, two, let's get the right one. And you're going to trim your edges even, I think it's actually this one here. And you will trim your edges and what you end up then with I don't know if you can just see down here you have got your this is the one I was working on your four and a half inch center and you will end up building these logs these strips all the way around and that will bring it up ever so clever love it love it that's your hexagon trim tool lots of things you can do with that um, now then another ruler that i wanted to show you is the quarter square and half square triangle ruler so this one is av51 fab okay so this one is absolutely brill for making quarter square and half square triangles. Now I know we can do that using our regular ruler, but sometimes it's about the most efficient method for what you need. Um, and I'm working on a quilt at the moment, it's a lady of the lake block. And I think there are 21 half square triangles per nine inch block, which is an awful lot of piecing to do for quite a small block. Um, and I was started off and made the first block the traditional way to make the half square triangles. Two squares, adding seven eighths of an inch, right sides together, draw the diagonal and sew either side. The thing was, the size that I'm working at makes the cutting awkward. And it was all the marking as well. Uh, it was just taking forever. So I started using this template and what a difference it made. Okay, so now then I'm just going to take the instructions out of this one so that I can get this right. Oh, 
Okay, right then. So, let's say, for example, we want to make two inch finished half square triangles. What I need to do to start with is to cut two and a half inch strip. So we'll do that. And then let me grab a contrast fabric. I'm pretty restricted on my choice of fabrics today. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> They're not fabrics I would automatically go for, but... And then the thing to do here is to put them right sides together so that they're already paired up ready for piecing. Okay, so I've got my two and a half inch strips. So this could be jelly roll strips actually, if you were working this. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna line up your two inch line along the bottom. Now, first thing you'll notice straight away is that the end of the triangle goes off the strip. That's absolutely fine. Don't panic about that. That's fine, that's allowed. If I just move this along very slightly and then I'll actually get some more half square triangles out of this side. So I don't want to waste that. So I'm going to make a cut there and there. Ideally use your rotating cutting mat here. There's my first pair. Okay, I can flip my ruler around, make sure that you're lining up the two inch line along one straight edge and then you'll see there's a little bit, a little um, triangle cut off here, the little white dotted line. So line those up again. And I'm just going to keep going like that along my strip. So I'll do the same again. I'll line this up and I'll leave a space to cut another one. You could rotate the whole strip if you wanted to, but um, this method works pretty well for me. And then I'll just flip that around. And the thing to do then is to get all of these over to your sewing machine and then you can start to chain piece them. Okay, so we've got this set up for a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And because you've smart stacked your fabrics, and I call it smart stacking because you've cut those triangles right sides together, joining the two fabrics together that you want to make into half square triangles, and then they are ready just to take straight to your sewing machine and feed through. Now you can imagine if I was doing this the well, it's not the traditional method. The traditional method is cutting triangles and sewing them like I'm doing now. But we've all come to accept that the traditional method is squares with a diagonal line drawn on them. Okay. Um, I'd still be marking. I'd still be marking. But I've done the sewing. Okay. And now I can grab my board and I can start pressing these. So this is so much quicker. You can do your quarter square triangles in exactly the same way. So all you've got to do is pick your finished size. So for example, so this is what we're going to use this side for our half square triangles and then we're going to use this side for our quarter square triangles. So for example, if we want to make five inch finished quarter square triangle. So when four of them are sewn together, it's a five inch finished square. We're going to cut out a five and a half inch um, strip. Okay, let me just grab my half square triangles and then I'm just going to flip these open and finger press them first. I've already set my seam. and then go in there and press. Now because of the little um, triangle that we that's kind of trimmed off if you like, uh, that takes off one of our dog ears. So the one that would be down here has already been trimmed off. So we can then just go in with a pair of scissors and trim the last dog ear off. And it's a good habit to get into, trimming off your dog ears as you go 
it makes everything fit together much more easily and then of course once you've made your quarter square triangles that you can then fit these together to create your block and know that everything's going to be straight and square and true and the best thing of all is no trimming down to size they've all come out the right size exactly the size that I want right size and shape and there we go easy half square triangles from triangles who'd have thought it eh <laughs> Now, you can't make half rectangle triangles using this ruler, no. It's for quarter square and half square. I can show you how to do quarter square, uh, half rectangle triangles at some point, but we haven't got a ruler for it today. But I will keep that in mind. I will keep that in mind. So that's our half square triangles. Now then, should we have a look at a few more rulers? Yeah, non-slip squares are good. Okay, let's grab some of those. <clears throat> Oops, sorry. Are we starting with the big one? Yeah. Okay, now with your non-slip square rulers, I would always get the biggest one that you can afford, okay? Unless you've already got it. I'd always go the largest size because you can cut smaller. Having the large one just gives you so many more options. So this one that we've got on screen now is a 20 and a half inch square. And this is the one that we often use on air. It's absolutely fab. If you're doing things like cutting out setting squares or triangles, if you're cutting out sort of supersized half square or quarter square triangles, if you want background blocks for a plique, um, it's so much easier if you can just cut the whole square out. So in terms of how you would cut out a large square, now I think we've got one ready. Yeah, we do, thank you. So most of us have got a six and a half inch by 24 inch ruler, haven't we, or six by 24 ruler. Um, let me just smooth that fabric out. So what we're going to do, let's say, for example, we wanted to cut out a ten and a half inch background square for a block. OK, so what you want to do is just get your ruler. Now then, of course, you do want to cut this on the straight of grain. So if you've got a pretty straight edge, you don't have to trim the edge square, but a pretty straight edge or a selve edge make sure that's sort of lined up somewhere. What I'm doing at the moment is making sure that my 10 and a half inch square sits comfortably on the fabric with just a little bit on these two sides here. And then what I'm going to do is make two cuts, one here and one here, and then take the rest of my fabric away. Okay. And then what I'll do is flip that around. So I now have my two cut edges on the left and lower edge and then I'm going to line those up with my ten and a half inch marks on the ruler okay so now my extra fabric to trim is on the outer edges and I can cut those and now I have a perfect ten and a half inch square okay and if you need quarter of an inch marks, you can always fold it and press it. Or to find the centre, just fold it and press it. And that's also the way if you want to cut even bigger than a 20 and a half inch square, you can use this ruler to do exactly that. So fold your fabric into quarters first. Press it really well so it's completely flat and make sure that all the edges are lined up absolutely perfectly. Okay, and then do the same again. So, for example, no, obviously I've got the space to do it, but if I wanted to cut a uh, nine inch square, I'd line up the four and a half inch marks on the fold. and cut and now I have 
my perfect eight and a half inch square. All right. Okay, perfect. So that's how to use that large a 20 and a half inch square. Now, if you want to cut or you, you want a smaller size ruler, we've got a few different sizes. We've got the 12 and a half inch, which again is a very, very good size. Or do you want me to go for a different one? Sorry. 12 and a half inch, this would be a great one to have in your stash of rulers. 12 and a half inch square ruler. Exactly the same markings, non-slip dots on the back. And you've got your 45 degree line through the centre. So uses for things like cutting those background blocks, but also for squaring up blocks, for squaring up half square triangles and quarter square triangles. And of course, you can also use it for cutting strips, squares, triangles out of your scraps. It's just perhaps a little bit easier to manoeuvre. Next up, we've got the eight and a half inch square. And once you've got your six by 24 ruler, it is the large square ruler that I would go for. Super, super useful. That's the eight and a half inch square. And then the smallest one that we've got is the six and a half. Sorry, this is a five and a half, isn't it? It's a five and a half inch. No, sorry, six and a half. Beg your pardon, six and a half. Six and a half inch square, fourteen ninety nine for that. <laughs> okay, right then. So those are our square rulers. Where would you like to go next? Rectangle. Oh, the really small one. Is it this one, GM31? Bear with us. There are, we've got a lot of rulers on the show today. Actually, you know what? I'm telling you what, I'm gonna grab this one because if you have gone for the Tula Pink Quilt Kit, you might wanna consider getting this actually. This is the 45 degree diamond and Lone Star ruler. Now I've got this at home and I've used it for Lone Star and it is absolutely brilliant. It is superb. So you could actually add this in and use this. It's a really good ruler and you've got full instructions here. Or if you've been inspired perhaps by um, Victoria's demonstration, maybe you've got your own fabrics at home that you want to use. We did have a lot of you asking if there was a pattern for a Lone Star quilt. Well, we haven't got a pattern for a Lone Star quilt, but what I would say is in your Creative Grids instructions, you have got how to make a Lone Star quilt complete with setting triangles um, and you know how to cut and piece the units. So this would be a good option to go for if you wanted. Now that each of the rulers also has a QR code in it. And um, I actually used the QR code from one of these rulers earlier on. You zap it basically with your smartphone and then click on the link and it will take you through to a video showing you how to use that ruler and how to get the best out of it. Really good option, particularly if you've bought one, maybe you saw a demo, but you want to see a little bit more, use those QR codes. If you're interested in any of the rulers and want to see the video in advance, just go on YouTube and search it by name. Now the next one that we've got here is the non-slip wedding ring templates. Now, um, if I flip it over and give you, give you a sense of what a wedding ring quilt, or you might even do a little search actually on Pinterest and see double wedding ring quilt. Um, but basically you make a quilt which looks like it's made of interconnected rings. It's an absolute classic quilt. It's on a lot of quilters bucket lists. Traditionally it's seen as a very advanced quilt. And a lot of that is because of the, in the past, the complexity of cutting and piecing. Here's an example, have a look at this. How gorgeous is that? Now that's one made out of pieced arcs. Yeah, 
those rings are made up of arcs. Now what you can see right here, uh, this, this arc template, you can either cut these as whole pieces of fabric, which looks lovely, or you can um, individually piece the arcs and sew them together and then cut out the arc in total. Absolutely brilliant. Um, also, the centre part of the ring, so if you have a look at the ring here, you'll see that you've got this sort of curved diamond shape in the middle right here. So you can either cut that out as a whole piece of fabric and that's a nice place to put things like, I don't know, machine embroidery or quilting or something like that. But if you want to mix up your fabrics, you can do this. So what you would do is sew four squares of fabric together, then lay your template on top and cut that out. And then you will have a pieced center as well. So there's loads of different options. Now, um, you can rotary cut everything using your creative grids ruler or your template set. So really, really worth doing, even the curves. And you can cut these using a regular 45 degree rotary cutter. You don't need to buy a special small rotary cutter for that. OK, now, Victoria Carrington's hour has got so many demos in it. We're going to go to a little break now and we're going to come to her show nice and early so that we get a chance to see all the demos for all six of her favourite patterns. So we'll take a short break. I'll see you after this. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. I've been part of the Sewing Street family now for over a year and it's been the most incredible journey so far. Some of you may already know that I like all things sewing, anything from quilting to toy making, needle felting, and of course applique, which is my favorite. The best thing about being part of the show is being able to share with you my imagination and bringing you new ideas and new designs and patterns and seeing how you interpret those designs and make your own work and then sharing your images of those is the most rewarding part for me. I'm currently working on lots of new ideas and exciting projects that I cannot wait to bring to the show and share with you all. But in the meantime, take care everyone and happy sewing. Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app, onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street fans and Yarn Lane TV fans on Facebook and click join group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. 
Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favorite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos, and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Sound Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one P&P all day. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. Full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website sewingstreet.com and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again.
Hi, welcome back to Sewing Street. I'm Stuart Hillard. Now then, we've managed, thank you so much, Victoria. It's all right. We've got loads of demos, haven't yeah. we, in this, in this show. Yeah. So you've come back a bit early. Because we didn't think we'd fit it all in. We wouldn't have fitted it all back no. in. So loads of demos, six, seven, in fact, of Victoria's favorite patterns on the show all with demos so we're going to get straight into it and we're going to start with some Seminole uh, patchwork now what you've got here is the Seminole sampler cushions I'm just going to grab them down for a second to show you because these are absolutely beautiful so smart now Seminole patchwork originally developed by the Seminole Native Americans who use the bands to decorate clothing, their homes. Brilliant patchwork technique that was then adopted by the rest of the world. You're getting, look at all these different techniques. I think it's fair to say that they sort of originated strip piecing, didn't they? Yeah, definitely. They're using strip piecing to create these. I know they look really complicated and difficult, but they're actually quite easy when you know yeah, how, they aren't are. they? Yeah, and the points and that are easy to match. We love, I'm loving the sound of it already. <laughs> I'm sold, I'm sold. Right, I'm gonna pop those back up there. Now what we've got, we've got a lovely little kit to produce those. So first and foremost, you have got Victoria Carrington's Seminole Cushion pattern okay really thorough instructions do we get the instructions for making both different styles of cushion yes all the all the different yeah. patchwork yeah and the fabric requirements on the back you can make both of them oh amazing and then what we've got is a fabric kit to create that so what you're getting is you get a meter of this gorgeous fabric now this is a liberty cotton quilting fabric you get a meter of that fabric and then you get half a meter of solid white. And then you get three fat quarters in complementary colors to create your patchwork. So that's your full kit. So all of your gorgeous fabrics, plus your all important instructions from Victoria Carrington. Now, I've got to tell you, we are very, very limited stock on that kit. I wouldn't hang about. $29.99 is a fantastic price. Oh no, apparently Ben doesn't like that price. You can do a little, really? Okay, all right. Well, we'll take that, $27.99, okay. Every little Ooh, saving, good. very nice, thank you. Right, $27.99 for that. Now, if you want the pattern on its own, I'm gonna show you that next, okay. I don't have a code. I don't have a code on this. Or is it, or yeah, is it, it oh, yeah. sorry, SKU <coughs> 121. Okay, so these are Victoria Carrington's Seminole Sampler Cushion Pattern on its own, pattern on its own, so you can add your own fabrics to this. So you, now fabric wise, if you want to get your fabric today, $9.99 for your instructions. That's very good, because they're really detailed instructions. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, what you will need is half a meter of your sort of light background, so where Victoria's used ivory. You want a meter of your feature fabric, and then you want three fat quarters to go with. So that's what you'll need fabric wise if you need to get some extra fabric. There are your instructions, 9.99. Lots of you flying in for those instructions. I think this is gonna sell out very, very quickly. So if you're after that, yeah, we've got 20 of those in baskets already and we've only been on it for about 30 seconds. Okay, make sure you check out your basket nice and quick for your Seminole sampler cushions. Mm. Okay, right, next up, should we do square in a square? Yes. Square in a square. Now I'm just looking for, I don't have a kit for that, no? No. No, so just instructions on their own. Yeah. So this is SKU 191. <laughs> Now, the quilt is a beautiful, beautiful quilt, Victoria. Yeah, and um, I quite, I, I, I've, 
I'm kind of sort of sticking to this size at the moment because it's nice like to throw on the sofa or something like that um, and then also from the fabric requirements you can make the cushion and the quilt as well and just having it sort of on the um what's it called when it's on point on point yeah yeah having it on point just makes it look like you've made it was a little bit more tricky but it's just really simple blocks it's definitely a beginner's perfect set. and so pretty in those fabrics yeah but this yeah. would be a great scrap busting quilt yeah wouldn't it? definitely definitely and you haven't got to have the same outside bits as middle bits you can just do it all scraps um, and I've also showed you how to do like this fillet binding as well Beautiful. Um, and if you didn't want to do that you don't have to so you can make it as hard or as easy as you want now the white the ivory that you've used throughout that yeah. kind of unifies everything if I was at home thinking this would be a great way to use my scraps but I need that background fabric yeah how much would we need for that size quilt So you need two metres. Two metres, yeah. easy. Yeah. So go for maybe a white, an ivory, whatever works with your scraps. Yeah, yeah. But you could use like a charcoal grey or exactly. a tan. Yeah, and that would give it a completely different look. Mm, beautiful, Yeah. beautiful. Really, really popular this uh, pattern. Again, 9 99 it's a phenomenal price for really detailed instructions from an industry expert now i'm wondering rather than just going through everything now victoria yeah. how would you feel about doing this little demo okay could we do, do a that. little bit of seminal yeah awesome let's do it do you want me i'll move things along a little bit and then i can make a bit okay. more space for you so with the kits as well because you get a meter of the liberty um print yeah you also get your your backs as a oh, pattern awesome. normally i just put like um a solid for that right so as I said, you can make both of the cushions. Um, so there's different different techniques. So here is like four different techniques. So you've got the rick rack, this centre one, these ones, and then and then this zigzag one as well. So it's a good. And again, I've put the fillets in just to jazz it up a bit. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah. Okay. And then so this is good because you can then transfer these skills of making these and then use them for borders for your quilts and add them as like little embellishments on other bits and pieces so that's just like a, a wash bag type thing and mm -hmm. um, so there's loads of different uses once you know the skill and obviously you'll add the instructions to make the strip so you just put it into whatever you want to mm. okay so we're going to make this one here let's put those up there out the way mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's not going to go well is it right so first of all, obviously I've put all the widths of the strips you need to cut. Okay, so this is just on some scrap fabric that I had. I should have really done <coughs> nice it out the kit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it's the same sort of colour range, isn't mm. it? So, okay, so what you do is you stitch your strips all together and then you press all your seams in the same direction. Okay, so when we cut it into strips, the seams will nest together because we'll just flip them round, okay? So this is what we're going to end up with in a minute, okay? Oh, that's cool. So that's straight, very straightforward, just stitching those together. And then we're simply going to cut strips. So it's a bit like the Tula quilt. Um, mm. Tula quilt this morning, isn't it? No, I've but forgotten my um, rotary straight cut. I'm using Oh, no, one. I've got yours right here. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. Just keeping it safe for you. Thank you. Okay. So I'm just going to cut the strips. And I've specified how many strips, obviously, you need yep. to cut in the pattern. Okay, and then all we're going to do, so if those are facing down, then we want these ones facing up. Okay, so they're going in opposite, the seams are going in opposite directions, and that's what makes it nestle together. Oh, I see. And for, for the points to match up with no issues at all. Okay. And because these are symmetrical, we can just flip them round. Yeah, exactly. So what you then do, so you're offsetting, like with the Tula quilt, you're offsetting your squares. 
your different patterns. Mm -hmm. So then I'm putting him on top of there. And you just nestle the seams together. So make sure that those seams butt up together nicely. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to stitch along there. Okay. It doesn't matter that one strip's sort of longer than the other. No, no, because that's what gives you the staggered diagonal effect then. And do you just start sewing at the very top of the fabric? Um, I just start um, just above the top fab. Oh, OK. Top. I'll show you in a second. So, so yeah, so as you go past each of the seams, just double check that they're nestled together. So as you get to one, you just stop, double check. And it, I mean, it looks really complicated, doesn't it, when you see them made, but it's actually really straightforward. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've just stitched from here, just where this top flap is, and mm -hmm. then stitched down there, so I've stitched over this bit here, okay? And then you just press it open with the seams towards one side. Okay. Okay. So there you've got that. So you can see it start coming together then. Mm -hmm. And then again, so I've just done these ones at home and then you can see you're starting to get your pattern. Okay. So obviously in the instructions, should we have a look at the instructions actually, that might help a bit. So these took me ages to do because they had to be right, didn't they? Of this course. Is, and there are lots of different um, options. So what I've said is um, if you're using the different fabrics to the one I'm using, um, just put a little swatch of, swatch of your fabrics in here. Um, just so you know know where you're going because obviously you've got different lengths of different ones haven't mm -hmm. you um, and then again there's lots of diagrams and I've put all the seam directions in and things like that so and then that shows you how to cut the edges I love the fact that we're learning some different techniques here as well yeah. so we're not just learning to make that one band of patchwork there are all those different designs that have been used in the cushion it's a bit of a sampler yeah so you're exactly. learning different techniques but it's essentially the same technique throughout isn't it yeah yeah strips cross cut yeah rejoin and some of them I've cut on um, you cut on the diagonal like the 45 degree but it's just to give people a bit of a practice see if they like it because obviously because they're cushions they're quite they're, not, they're manageable, aren't they? Mm. It's not like thinking you've got to embark on a massive quilt of it. No, absolutely. So, um, so yeah, but it's a great skill to have to transfer to other projects. Well, more than half of the stock of the Seminole cushion pattern has now sold out. Well done if you've got yours. If it's still in your basket, make sure you check out where you are. You might well miss out. Now, we've also got uh, a kit. If you would like the kit, and that includes the pattern plus a metre of Liberty fabric. In fact, there's quite a bit of Liberty fabric in here. You've got a metre of this gorgeous Liberty print. This is Liberty quilt weight cotton. So you get a metre of that. Then you get some fat quarters, so you get a solid. And then you also get the, both of these, which are Wiltshire Shadow from Liberty. And then you also get half a metre of white solid. So everything there for $27.99. Should be $29.99, little saving, why not? Mm. Why not? Okay, so if I just quickly show you how to, to cut it down. So obviously this is all in the instructions. So all I'm doing now, and because, because it's such an accurate way to do it, 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 it this, is, this, bit, this part's really simple. Um, so literally I'm just lining up the points here with my quarter of an inch mm -hmm. and then I'm just going to trim that off, flip him round and do the same thing there. So you're just lining that quarter inch mark all the way along? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that then you've got your quarter of an inch to put your side bits onto. Oh yeah. So. Fab. Okay. 
And of course, you could make long strips of this for maybe something like a baby quilt, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Alternate them, mirror them from the inside out. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Definitely. That's really cute. So that's that. And again, I'd have a practice with some scrap first, mm. um, maybe before you start on your real fabric as it were yeah um but yeah that's it's a real fun one to do um, and then i also show you how to so this is the um this is part of one of the, one of the sample ones um but this just demonstrates how to so basically i've just taken a strip of fabric i can't remember the size um and pressed it lengthways wrong sides together and then just popped him on there and then obviously you'll put your next bit of fabric on the top and then that just shows through a nice bit which makes it just look a bit different doesn't well, it's it? really smart it's a lovely yeah. finish yeah really and you can smart do that finish. with binding as well so again that's a good technique for mm. for other projects looks gorgeous and it's so pretty and subtle and it's just a different technique yeah to add to your toolbox. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I love it, definitely. I love it. So that's the Seminole sampler cushion. Now then, we've already had a look at the square in a square. Yeah. So do you have a little demo for that? Yeah. Awesome. It's not very exciting because it's so easy. Yeah, well, that's good though, because <laughs> yeah. for some of our viewers, this might exactly. be their first quilt. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is a nice, simple one. So it's just made up of two blocks and um, and then these setting triangles here around the edge um, a little border and then you've obviously got your binding so it's um i can't remember what size it is 53 inch squared and then from and you can also make which the instructions include is the oh, 18 great. inch square cushion as well so that's not on point but it's uh, the same pattern really gorgeous so, yeah we we all think it is on point <laughs> if you turn it around that way <laughs> okay so, so if you're brand new to patchwork or want a nice easy project this is the one yeah definitely okay so back to basics so you take your first square so we're going to be making this block which is the the easiest one so again the more accurate you cut um the better results you're going to get and it's going to be a lot easier to put together at the end isn't it well i was just going to ask you i'm going to play devil's advocate yeah. here okay and i'm going to ask why would you cut those strips to size because i've seen lots of youtube tutorials lots of patterns where you just sew a strip on longer than you need and chop off either end yeah so why wouldn't you do that yeah you will you using that technique you won't get a, a perfect square um yeah it's just you just don't do you you don't it'll no. warp yeah exactly um and then when you come to do things like say if you put together a quilt using that technique and mm -hmm. you've got lots of boards and stuff um when you came to press it and put it on your wadding and your backing it'd be all skew if mm -hmm. and you wouldn't have a nice square quilt yeah. so um so yeah it's it's very important to do that and say for instance if you've got um if you've got a peak say this was um patchwork mm -hmm. and that's your border mm -hmm. then you want this is going to be the accurate size because you know that what is it cut, Stuart? isn't it it's, <laughs> sorry, it's cut to size yeah so you know that is the size that it needs to be mm -hmm. so you would then ease that in to fit that you wouldn't just like put it in and trim the edge off or likewise with that you wouldn't just trim the edge off that it's got it they've got to go together yeah accurately it's often the temptation though isn't it i think that's why a lot of people when they sew borders on will just sew an extra long piece of fabric and trim yeah, the ends yeah because it's the easy way it yeah, seems of course but everything ends up pulling out of shape and the thing is as well unless you're kind of told that you're not necessarily going to know that information no. are you what's so, wrong with doing that yeah yeah okay. okay so cut your strips to size yes cut mm. accurately um and a lot of beginners would perhaps maybe use scissors and like a tape measure mm -hmm. for the best results you need a rotary cutter a ruler and a, and a mat agreed and i don't think you can get away with with anything else if you want the accuracy and it's all about having the tools for the job to make it easier and more pleasurable isn't mm. it okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this border section and position it on there and then I'm just going to sew a quarter of an inch seam now 
on my sewing machine at home, I have to move my needle across, even though it's got a quarter of an inch setting, I have to move my needle across um, because it's, it doesn't give me an accurate quarter of an inch seam. So you want to just test it on something and just measure it. Interesting that, because you think, don't you, if it's a quarter inch foot or a quarter of an inch stitch on a machine, yeah. well, I'm just getting a quarter of an inch. But yeah. you're saying measure it, yeah, adjust double it check. if you need. And it's just getting to know your own machine, isn't it? Because on mine, I have to move it right over to the furthest point to get an accurate quarter of an inch. Perfect. Okay, Thank so you. with patchwork, you don't need to um, backstitch to the edge. You just start and stop. And that's why we use a shorter stitch length as well, so those seams stay together Perfect. better. Okay, so I'm just going Lovely to message for you across the bottom from Anis, who's in County Armagh. Good morning, Victoria and Stuart and Sewing Street team. Victoria, last year I bought your sampler quilt ah. kit. It's behind Stuart. This one right here, the triangle sampler. Beautiful. And we've got this on the show today as well, haven't we? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. That is so lovely. We'll do it straight after this demo. Yeah. Okay, so again, I'm lining my edges up. And as well, it's good to get a quarter of an inch foot with a guide on it um, if, you're, if you're new to it, because it just makes it... Um, oh, dear. Oh, I've got a little bit of a problem. Yvonne's just messaged in. Yvonne, you put two into your uh, basket and paid for two and you want it reduced to one. Yvonne, what you'll need to do is call the call centre. It's 0800 001 4433 and they will be able to do that for you. No problem at all. That's the only way you can do it, but it'll be really quick and easy. Right, hang on. It was doing that to me, Victoria. Was it? I thought five it was coming in the thread. Five times it, I think oh. it did it, yes. I, um, I said no in the end. Because I had a go out, out there and it uh, seemed to have sorted itself mm. out, but obviously it wanted to wait till now to do it to me. I don't know. Sometimes it's a, I don't know if it's a badly wound bobbin or something like that. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to take everything out and start again, yeah. don't you? Yeah, so I just take everything off give it a good clean out as well mm. just to be on the safe side um, and that generally sorts it out but be reassured at home you think it only ever happens to you these malfunctions oh no no Charlie says to me sometimes you do definitely enjoy sewing don't you <laughs> you know yeah. those days though when you sort of you know you you yeah your yeah. language becomes flowery yeah, exactly. and colorful yeah and you think oh, oh I know, and you think, why am I cutting up bits of fabric to join them yeah. together again? It tends to be like unthreading <laughs> or the machine jamming. Yeah, and, you yeah. know that, that for me is a real pain point. Yeah, so I've just pressed this, so that sets the seam again, so it makes the stitches knit together better, and then we're just going to press, press these open. Now, when you're pressing, press from the top outwards, because if you press from the back, you can get like um, a pleat in it, mm -hmm. can't you? Which mm -hmm. is really hard to remove and very annoying. So, oh, I was a bit, a bit speedy for it then. <laughs> okay. So then you've got that. And then you take your other two pieces. And this is where you wanna make sure that they fit together exactly, okay? So like we said earlier, so we know it's gonna be a square block then. So if, it, if, if you've used a shorter seam um, and it's gone a bit shorter, you need to stretch that out so it's the same length as this, as this border mm. here, okay? We don't often get a chance to kind of go back to basics, do we? It's, it's a really good thing sometimes though, because like for all of us, whatever our skill level. Yeah. I will say some of the most inaccurate sewing is when we're sewing the simplest blocks. Yeah, that's sewing true. strips together. We get a bit gung-ho, don't yeah, we? Yeah, you get a bit complacent, don't mm. you? And actually making one of these square and a square blocks, start to finish, whatever your skill level, is a really good test of are you cutting and piecing accurately? So yeah. don't cut out everything before you've pieced one block together, just in case. Yeah. So what would you say your absolute top tips were for beginner sewers, Victoria? Um, 
putting you on the spot. There. I know. Okay. Um, it's just, I think one of the main things people just expect to be able to just start doing something and they're going to be brilliant at it immediately. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things. It's just practice, isn't it? Just practice. Mm -hmm. And you're never going to get all your points matching perfectly and don't get too wound up about it, really. But it's, it's all about the tools, yep. I'd say. So, like I said, a good rotary cutter. You want a 45 mil one mm -hmm. um, and a good size mat and a good size ruler. Go as big as you can. Yep. Um, because you you won't grow out of it then. Absolutely, totally agree with you there. Um, so, top tip: cut yourself some slack. Yeah, definitely. Good advice. Yeah. That. Good yeah. advice. Forgive forgive yourself for not being perfect. Exactly. It's a journey. Yeah. None of us are getting there. None of us will get there, will we? No, you don't get in a car and be able to drive it straight away, do no. you? You have to learn, really. So. And also, I've had the the honour of meeting some world class quilters. They're all striving for perfection. Yeah. They're all. It's always about the next quilt, mm. and I do this differently. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I always remember once meeting Sandy Lush who is the most incredible hand quilter and she was at a show and tell and she showed a, a whole cloth quilt and it was unbelievably, I mean, the amount of work in it. And she said, I designed this and she's a multi award winning. And she said, and I got halfway through stitching it and I realized that the corner units, when I traced them off, I turned them through 90 degrees or something and they were supposed to go the other way so she said I finished that and then when I'd finished it I remarked another quilt with them the right way round and did it all again yeah and this was about yeah. a hundred inch square oh whole cloth life. quilt she did twice because she got her templates around the yeah. wrong way yeah. but she'd followed it through and you think wow wow yeah yeah just cut yourself some slack exactly um okay so with this pattern as well so obviously again you get all the photos mm -hmm. so it's step by step there's <coughs> a lot also, there for 9.99 um and you also get the binding supplement which shows you how to do um how to bind a quilt because a lot of the time a lot of the patterns just Don't put say it in. Bind. So yeah. you'll get a detailed instruction and then I go bind it yeah. and some people might not necessarily know mm -hmm. how to do that so mm -hmm. so that's in there in there as well but yeah like I say like you said it's a great scrap buster and a nice size it is. you could use kids fabrics and do it as like um, a christening present or oh, something like yeah. that or one of those I spy quilts where you put different fussy cut different um, animals and stuff and they have to find them yeah and yeah so there's lots of different things you can do with it and it's nice it, and quick to make it is gorgeous absolutely fantastic and for that pattern all you will pay is 9.99 9.99 for your square in a square quilt pattern from victoria carrington awesome right now then Ah, uh, sampler, triangle sampler quilt hanging right behind me. Now this is a great place, once you've perhaps made your very first quilt, yep. this is a great place to <coughs> learn new skills and move on. Because you're going to make nine different blocks. You're going to learn a lot in this, aren't you? Yeah. Tell me more, tell me more. How did you come to design this? So, it's it, that that's actually just round the wrong way slightly so those are hearts at the oh, top if you're it thinking is, what on it? earth what on earth is that at the top yes so um right so didn't that happen to a jackson pollock painting or something <laughs> it's been in a museum for decades and it was hung upside <laughs> down something like that oh, apologies so, the way i've done this is um normally on a quilt i'd i'd sort of do perhaps bigger borders why I wanted to do it like this with smaller borders is because you can fit, you can make the quilt out of, back it with a width, single width of fabric. Gotcha. So people don't have to go and buy a load of backing fabric mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So it makes it more affordable. Yep. Lovely. Um, so there are um, quarter square triangles, flying geese. What else? I can see half square triangles. Flying geese, half square triangles quarter square triangles diamond in the square yes so it's basically just lots of different techniques of 
doing triangle patterns, yeah. basically. Perfect. Have you um, got something from the quilt you can show us? Yeah, well, because I didn't think I was going to have very long. I didn't okay. do big demos. Mm -hmm. So I'll just show you how to make the make the heart one. So this is a really basic um, flying geese block. Okay, so basically, again, I've done, um, you can put your fabric swatches here. And there's your cutting instructions. So what I've done is I've divided it. I must have had a lot of time on my hands when I make, when I did this pattern. Because no, I've done didn't. I've done it in two sections. Okay, right. so the first section is um, shows you how to do a generic flying geese mm -hmm. and a generic um, half square triangle, and then at the end of each method, it shows you how if you wanted to do your own. Um, the the sort of equation as it were oh, to um, to make your own different different sizes because obviously there's different things where you add a seven eighths of an inch and half an inch and stuff like that mm -hmm. so that enables you if you wanted to design your own block mm -hmm. you could use that method and and go from there or I suppose if we wanted to make this quilt but make it for a double bed yeah we can yeah. enlarge everything yeah exactly awesome. so so that's the light blue section that tells you that and then there's a section for each of the blocks. So I've, I've obviously got the fabrics and um, I've also labelled them um, with letters. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you want some water? Did I bring some? Yeah, if that's okay. Yeah, I'm sure we can get you I some water. I think it's gone. Thank you. Um, so again, just talk you through each of the blocks. So yeah, this is a... It's a whopper, this one. It really is. Well, I mean, I yeah, picked up the big. pattern and it actually feels like a magazine. There's a yeah. lot of pattern in yeah. there for your money. It's 11 99 for this. But, I mean, what a fantastic... Because it's not only um, one block repeated 49 times to make a quilt yeah. with borders. You could actually take any one of those blocks and then make multiples of. So you, if effectively you've got nine quilts there in that. You've got the sampler quilt itself. You could make <coughs> individual cushions. But also what Victoria's done is to include the method, the theory <coughs> behind, the formulas behind the methods so if you want to resize if you want to make your own versions then you can yeah. i think that's absolutely terrific it's a great resource yeah and you get the um, binding instructions with that one. Oh, you get the, su the supplement for the binding as well yeah, yeah awesome so i put that i put that binding supplement in any pattern that's got binding on it basically. I think that's terrific because you're right a lot of instructions mine included yeah um, don't go because it's a lot of instructions yeah for the same thing repeated yeah, for every single exactly. quilt yeah yeah and even if you know how to do it sometimes if you're not doing it regularly you can forget can't you you can I do okay so we're gonna do a flying flying geese now you're using a stitch and flip method for this yeah Okay, so you take your triangle, obviously I'll give you all the sizes, and then you put your square on top and you draw a line through the centre diagonally. Okay. And I'm just going to stitch along that line. <coughs> Excuse me. Dear, you're suffering a bit today. I've got, um, I lost my voice yesterday. Oh gosh. I've got a really dry throat. Not well timed. No, I have done a COVID test this morning and I was clear, so. All sorts of other things that, you know, you can have wrong with you, aren't there? Yeah, exactly. I think we all feel like we have to explain, don't we? It's not COVID. <laughs> yeah, you know. exactly. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, I've just stitched along that diagonal line. Mm -hmm. Now, to get absolute accuracy, on these because obviously when you fold that back you've got that fold that takes up some of the fabric mm -hmm. so it doesn't necessarily so if I pull that back like that I'll chop that off in a second it doesn't exactly sit square so if you stitch so you're just stitching like literally touching the center line but you're not stitching down the center then that gives you a, an extra accuracy mm -hmm. but you haven't got to do that obviously Okay, so I'm just going to trim that off, leaving a quarter of an inch seam. 
What would you do with those triangles that you've cut off? Um, well, something that size, I yep. would probably not bother doing anything with. Okay. But there's a quilt later on where I've used those off cuts. Mm. Um, <coughs> I'm sorry, oh, you poor thing. Where did this come from? We well, have got the air con on yeah. really high, so it's dry, it'll be drying out your throat. Oh, you poor thing. <coughs> now, instructions on screen, or uh, details on screen, actually, for Victoria Carrington's Triangle Sampler Quilt. It's hanging behind me. Absolutely delightful quilt. This is hung sideways on, just for fun. Hey, why not? <laughs> but so many different quilt patterns. This one over here, I think, has got a little bit of a look, almost like of the Seminole patchwork, but different techniques. But you could mix some of your Seminole patchwork with this and create a whole quilt just using these techniques over here. Now, there are single figures left on these instructions so if you want to get uh, Victoria Carrington's triangle sampler pattern you need to be quick just all of these patterns are absolutely gorgeous um, and great for complete beginners but also if you've mastered the absolute basics but you want to just take it in a different direction I think it's a super pattern okay. how are we doing yeah all right thanks good <laughs> okay so I've taken this second square and positioned him over the top like that and you'll get some overlap there because you're going to get the quarter of an inch seam and then again we're just going to stitch along that line uh, Seminole cushion instructions on their own have now sold out so that's gone is it sold out single figures of the kit if you want the kit that is the if you want the instructions by the way that is the only way to get them now in the kit but we have got single figures remember you get your meter of gorgeous liberty Quartway cotton, you get your three fat quarters, two of those are Liberty as well, and then you get your half meter of white plus your pattern for $27.99. Now we've literally got two of those left, so be quick, won't you? Uh, square in a square is what we're we've been looking at. Square in a square was our last uh, demo. Yeah. Half the stock has gone. Half the stock. Okay. Busy morning, Victoria. I know, I know. Okay, so I'm just lining up that stitch line, giving myself a quarter of an inch seam. Chop him off. But like you say, you can you can just like join these together, mm. and then you've got like a small unit, so mm. you can you can do all sorts of things with those, like make yeah. a pin cushion or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, I'm just setting the seam and pressing that open. Okay, so that's that. And I've just made two smaller versions of that. Oh, I see where this so is going. You, <clears throat> so that's how you do the heart block. So you just Gorgeous. make four of those and you've got your block. So that's how simple it is. So you could do a block a night or mm. cut them and do them when you fancy. It's, it's not like a daunting project because they're different no. blocks. Absolutely, you're and just working on them builder. unit by unit. Yeah, exactly. No, I think that's really lovely. It's great. Well, been really, really popular with you. Single figures on the triangle sampler pattern, 11.99. Um, those are not the details on screen. Those are for square in square. But the triangle sampler quilt that finishes 42 inches square is down to single figures now. And like you said, nice that it's the the right size for using a single width yeah, of fabric. Yeah. Definitely. Smashing. I mean, you can make it with bigger borders if you want, and mm. or like you said, just do one block mm. and repeat it, or what have you. Sold so. out, Victoria. Okay. Sold out. Okay. Sold out. Right. What should we do next? Now, shall we do now? Bold blooms. <coughs> bold blooms. Now then, let me grab oh. these down because there's lots of samples for this. Let me grab down the quilt first of all. Would you just hold this with me, yep. please? Now, 10% of this quilt kit has already gone. Now then, this is one of four projects from this pattern. So this is called Bold Blooms, and you've got the wall hanging. That's yep. beautiful. 
absolutely gorgeous so again that's the same size as this one yeah so you can use that as a throw on the sofa fantastic or but you could put four blocks kids. together you could put four of those big yeah. blocks for a big yeah. bed quilt couldn't yeah. you that is absolutely stunning so you get the wall hanging then you also get the <coughs> pattern to make a small version for a cushion yeah how cute is that that is lush love that so we get the pattern for that then we also get mini cushions yeah so they're made from literally the off cuts from the quilt so with our kit that we're getting victoria yeah. we've just got enough fabric to make the wall hanging no you can no. make all of that no and the way cushion backs. So, and so, the backs as well yeah so you need to get the back in for the quilt right um but you get all the binding and the backs That's for the cushions amazing okay let's get those details up on screen because you can get the pattern on its own but let's start with the kit because that just sounds like phenomenal value um, i've got it right here in front of me so to start off you've got your bold blooms quilt pattern and again you're getting instructions for four different uh, projects there you've got your large wall hanging or throw quilts you've got your cushion your large cushion and then you've got your two smaller cushions you've enough fabric in this kit for 59.99 to make everything so let me just show you what you're getting oh this is a gorgeous fabric combination <coughs> oh this is so pretty right so you're getting half a meter of this blue you're getting oh that's lovely look at that it's a bit 50s this isn't it really nice so these are all half meters mm. and then we've pulled out that soft pink and then that gorgeous bright blue Oh, that is fab. So you're getting all of those fabrics. I can't believe that's enough to make everything yeah. and the backings of the cushions and the bindings. You just need backing for the quilt. Yeah. Incredible, 59.99. You get the pattern as well. Now then, if you want, oh, and that is that so way. cute. That oh, cute. now look at that. <clears throat> when you see it all made up, that is gorgeous. That is absolutely gorgeous. It is, it's very arty that, isn't it? Joie de vivre. <laughs> Je ne sais pas pourquoi. I don't know what I just said, but it sounded good. <laughs> isn't it a Kylie? It's a Kylie song. It's a Kylie song. That's the <laughs> only reason why French I from. know it. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? I'm so lowbrow, I really <laughs> am. But you're getting all of that. Um, 59.99 amazing amazing mm. value because there's a lot of stuff that you can there make. is a lot and of stuff there you could split that and give it as gifts or sell yeah, them at a craft fair or something like that yeah yeah it's absolutely awesome now if you want to get the pattern on its own you can also buy the pattern on its own let's give you the details for that and then we'll get to demo uh instructions on their own 9.99 for that now that's amazing i thought this might be another 11.99 i think that would still be really good value but 9.99 is amazing victoria can i ask what your angel policy is um so i'm happy for people to like make stuff to sell for craft fairs and stuff like that mm. um but so yeah, we can make and sell for profit on a small scale yeah yeah small scale yeah yeah don't, don't be don't sending send this to, to a, a factory, factory. <laughs> <laughs> absolute oh i just love that the colors really work that is joyful that is absolutely gorgeous now then have you got a little demo for this well yes i i've got i'm just going to show you how it how it's sort of where is it pointing at nothing awesome i've how got it breaks down where is the quilt see ya it's behind you So, there's three it's different It's like that blocks. thing you do with dogs, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> no, just, I just can't move that fast Throw at the moment. I just, I can't, no, I can't. No. If you're not there when uh, 
when it comes out, I'll be very surprised. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's made up of three different blocks, okay? So the first one is this centre block here, which is like a, a windmill effect. And that's just <laughs> like that one there. Okay. And, um, and then you will let me know when I can come out, won't you? <laughs> Don't just leave me here. <laughs> and then you've got this corner block, so you obviously make four of those. <laughs> okay. And then the other block is this one here, which is that one. Okay. You can put your arms down there if you want. Oh, I can. <laughs> My arms were getting quite tired, I'll Isn't be they? honest. Yeah. It's harder work than it looks. Yeah. So. So, basically, all you do is... I'll, sh I'll show you in the pattern, actually. Um, so, the kits that we had on last time, so I just put the different fabric swatches um, along there, just so I could work out what I was doing for what. Mm -hmm. um, cutting the instructions, and then... The, the main thing to remember here is to get the to get the sort of effect is because there's there's obviously two kind of a yellow and a orange mm -hmm. so they kind of go together and they're sort of made up the petals on the outside and then there are two two forms of blue in the middle so if you were to use your own fabric you'd want two similar colors and another two different similar colors if yeah, you get what gotcha. I mean. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Um, so so yeah, it's just you need to allocate the like for that I've gone B1 B2 as in blue fabric mm -hmm, one blue fabric mm -hmm. two so it's just a case of just keeping on top of that and, yeah. and getting your fabric placement right, makes which perfect I've explained sense in the okay um, and again you get the binding instructions and all the pictures so so yeah yeah absolutely gorgeous and then you kind of just position them together so that's one and I think section. what's really clever about this pattern is that what look like very complicated units yeah. are actually very easy to piece, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, exactly. So these are just that flying, ge flying ge geese, flying geese technique that we just did. So that's that. Um, and then there's a half square triangle, which is also in the triangle mm -hmm. sampler quilt. Um, so yeah really straightforward and then these units here this is yeah. stitch and flip corners yeah yeah so that's just literally putting a square on the corner stitching down it diagonally chopping off the seam and pressing it open so and you just do that on either side and then put that one on there perfect so it's really so again beginner friendly user friendly all of victoria's instructions are beginner friendly user friendly you're guided from step one now what we're looking at at the moment are the bold blooms quilt and cushion set now the details on screen at the moment are for the instructions on their own and it, Amazingly, you've got all the patterns for the large quilt, the large cushion, and the two smaller cushions, which are using up leftovers, aren't they? Yeah. Um, and then we have a kit as well. Oh, really lovely message from Princess Maya. This is why I've always said that Victoria is like the beautiful girl next door. Aww. She's a girl after my own heart with her fabric and pattern choices. <laughs> I just love her. Aww, and you, of course, you. Stuart. <laughs> Oh, thank, thank you. you. That's really lovely. Aww. Now let's just grab. Now over half the stock of the pattern on its own has gone. We've also got a kit. Now the kit's incredible value because you get the pattern, that's $9.99 value, and then you get all of your fabric. Now the fabric combo that you're getting, if I show you them all together, looks amazing. Really, really smart combination of fabrics there. And perhaps a little bit more daring in terms of yeah. the choices than you might have made. Um, but here we go. You're getting all these gorgeous fabrics. So there you can see you've got your two blues, you've got your two yellows or golds, and then you've got your background and your binding. $59.99 and you get enough fabric there to make all four projects. Large uh, throw quilt, large cushion and two smaller cushions. Incredible. Right, now then, what should we do next? The small tote? Yep. 
small totes let's do that gorgeous right then okay so got a sampler there so for this one and mm -hmm. um, this is i've got my daughter on the oh yes there. so that just shows that like it's good for a child like a overnight bag or whatever but it obviously still fits an adult yeah so Fab. a little yeah. bit of modeling there i know <laughs> Did you have to agree a few before <coughs> she did the work? Yeah. yeah. Good. And the other one was a bit moody that she did. Oh, oh really? Yeah. So you have to do another pattern with Yeah. 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 We'll say. It's tough, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the pattern's on screen for the stitch and flip tote bag. It's nine ninety nine. Full instructions for your pattern. Now yeah. then, talk us through the bag. So there are um obviously you can these are nice if you've got a nice nice print with a, a biggish because because they're big sections mm. you can get away with a bigger pattern can't you because mm. sometimes when you when you've got a big print and you're cutting it down into something really small it kind of detracts from the whole thing yeah. of having nice fabric so um so this is a good one for that um and it doesn't need masses of fabric either so well have a look at fabric requirements actually so we're talking yeah. fat quarter uh, fabric A, fat quarter fabric B, fat quarter of solid, and then a half meter of light solid fabric yeah. for the lining. Yeah. So basically, three fat quarters and a half meter. And a half yeah. meter. Yeah. Now and we have got a couple of colourways available. Actually, I've got the red. I'm not sure I've got the other. Oh, is that it's the origami like cushion, isn't it? We'll just have a look in. Oh no, I've got them. I've got them. Sorry. Right. Yes. Oh, lovely. Let's start with the pink. Glorious. Right. So, you've got your pattern. That's great value. Twenty two ninety nine. You're getting your pattern, and then this is your lining. We've got two of this kit two of this kit and then you've got your three fat quarters those are gorgeous aren't they mm. literally two of those so be really quick if you're going to grab that so that's one option then our second option we've called this red although it's more kind of orangey so you have got your cream solid and then you've got your fat quarters that's a lovely combo really liking that a bit mm. festive yeah it is a bit festive mm. There are only five of that kit, twenty two ninety nine for that. And those fabrics have got the um, like matte metallic on as mm. well, so they look they're really nice. Yeah, really nice, sort of bronze metallic yeah. on this one right here, or almost rose gold actually, a rose gold metallic. And then this one over here has got gold. Very nice. You can really see that, can't you? Gorgeous. Okay. So. So. Um, I have used for this, I've used um, Bosal in our form, mm -hmm. um, or you can just use some wadding, just not, it just depends on how rigid you want it really. Um, so I've just got a really quick demo for that. Fab. And then, then you can just kind of embellish it with buttons or um, beads or whatever you want mm -hmm. really. And the way I've quilted it, I've just done kind of lines that are really close together. Um, kind of gives it a good nice texture okay so this is really easy mm -hmm. okay um, I've just done a, a smaller version rather obviously this won't be the size of yours okay cool okay so you take your first I'll show you the instructions first. Great. okay so again you've got your things where you can pop your sample of fabric and then all the pictures okay there we go okay so you take your first so this is like a stitch and stitch and flip method oh, um, okay. so kind of quilt as you go ah, okay so you pop you. your first one on there should I bring some pins in Not some nope. pins you can grab you some safe. pins, Thank I think. You. Yeah. Ooh. We've got a metallic pin oh. dish on Ooh. a metal trolley, so it was completely <laughs> glued to the trolley. <laughs> okay, so I'm taking my first strip 
and I'm putting it level with the bottom of my um, wadding. Right side okay. up? Yes. Oh. I'm just going to pin that on. Okay, then I'm going to take my next piece of fabric and that would be, if this was patterned, mm -hmm. this would be right side down. Okay. So right sides together. And I'm just going to level those up there. And again, oh, get off. Pin that like that. Now, you, you don't have, you want some overhang here, so then you trim it back at the end. Okay. Okay, and then all we're going to do is stitch across here using a quarter of an inch seam. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd, if you've got a walking foot, you can do this without a walking foot, obviously, but if you have got a walking foot, you are much better to do it with a walking foot. Right. Okay. And you're using in our form, aren't you? We yeah. have got some uh, fusible in our form available. If you have a look on the website, we might be able to put details on the screen actually. Um, it's one of my bag making heroes, 11.99 for a half meter. This is what it looks on, like on the website. This is the single sided fusible. If you were using single sided fusible, Victoria, where would you have your fusible? I would, I would probably have it on the top. Yeah. And when I opened it out, just don't press above where the fabric right. is. Just stay on your fabric because yeah. otherwise you can get it on the bottom of your iron. Gotcha. So if you're not using a walking foot, well, if you even if you are, you want a kind of a bit of a longer stitch because you're going through um, the wadding, which is a little bit thicker. Okay, so you take your pins out. You flip him open. Now you can um, you can press that if you want, but mm -hmm. you don't really need to. And then all I'm going to do then is stitch, top stitch along there. Now obviously you wouldn't do it in red thread, but it's just to show you. Oh right, okay. Right, so that would be, I'd do that in cream, obviously. Okay, so we can get rid of these now. So what you then do is you cut your squares out. So these are called prairie points. So you cut some squares and then you fold it in half, press that, and then you fold it in half again and press that. Okay, so you've got your raw edges along the long edge. And then what you do is you position your triangles. So I'm going to go blue, cr um, coral, blue. So I've got my opening there where it folds open mm -hmm. and I'm going to put my closed fold as it were under there. And you just want to overlap them like that. Okay, so you want about a quarter of an inch down. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pin those. It's a really cute addition to a bag. Yeah. And, you, and again, you can use this technique on, on other stuff. Like I've put this on um, borders on a quilt. Mm. Um, and then you could do like a little cross with embroidery thread or sew a button on or whatever you mm. want to do. So would you call those prairie points? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we've had Seminole patchwork and prairie points. Very Midwestern. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> okay. And we had gingham on in the first hour. It's a bit yeah. of a, you know, cowboy hour. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what you'd then do is use a tacking stitch to go across there, so like a bigger stitch. So I'd go to the maximum length on my machine and just tack it across there, about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that just holds it in place. I'm not going to do gonna that. You're not going to do that. No. Okay, so again... You're daring. I know. It's where it all goes wrong, isn't it? It's like we said, it'll catch up with you in the end. So be honest, Victoria. Yeah. Be honest. Confession time. <laughs> when you're sewing at home yeah. and you're sewing on your samples or whatever, yeah. 
do you pin? Do you not pin? Are you a bit of a fly by the seat of your pants? Or? Yeah, I don't, I don't really pin because um, when you're joining like longer lengths and stuff, if you've pinned all the way down and you need to ease it in a bit more, mm -hmm. you've got to take all your pins up. So I just kind of just go yeah. for it really. Fair enough. But obviously when you're doing things like this or um, there's always a place for them, isn't there? And yeah, for yeah. different things. Okay, so again, I'm just going to stitch down a quarter of an inch. Okay, perfect. Now, instructions on their own are $9.99. It's Victoria Carrington's Stitch and Flip Tote Bag. Um, so you can get those instructions on their own. I'm just looking. There they are for the tote bag. Uh, really lovely. Great size. Height of 12 inch, width 11, depth of 4 inches, so you can get plenty in there. Now we've also got two different kits. Have we still got either of them? Oh. Sold out. Red. We've got the red. Okay, the pink's all gone, but we have got the red. We've just got a couple. Okay, there's nine of these in baskets and we've got three left. So you've got that gorgeous gold metallic there in those three fabrics, a gorgeous kind of rusty orange with pears on it. This lovely, almost like sort of Jacobean style. And that beautiful green, fat quarters of each of those. And then you've also got your half meter of cream. So, um, gosh, and that's everything for the outer bag and the lining. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, yeah. I love that. So, stitched oh, like along here. Bunting. Yeah, yeah. And then you just fold that back. And again, just top stitch across there to keep it nice and flat mm -hmm. for the next bit. Because it, do, it does help it stay flatter. Mm. Um, and that's that one, really. Yeah, perfect. You've added some little buttons, I think, on your finished bag, yeah. haven't you? So I've got some little tiny heart buttons. And just pop those on there. Mm really yeah. cute like that yeah and again you can do kids fabric you can do yeah grown-up fabric I love it <laughs> <Grown up> fabric. <laughs> no I want the kid fabric thank you <laughs> okay right that's that now then we've got one more, one more pattern and kit to share with you and it's for the origami cushion oh we've got a stitch and flip cushion as well yes we do oh well let's just do the stitch and flip cushion then Okay, so this is stitch and flip cushion instructions on their own for $9.99. I'm guessing similar technique. Yeah, so the same technique, but that obviously gives you the um, instructions to make it as a cushion. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous, love that, $9.99. Now, finally, the origami, now I've been very excited about this. This is amazing. I love the fact to start with, it's a really different shape look at that that is so clever now that remi instantly reminds me of a biscornu yeah um but done as a cushion rather than a little sewing accessory but check out the origami fabric origami that is absolutely fantastic isn't it that looks really hard to do is that really hard to do? No. No? You're going to show us how? Yes. Awesome. Check this out. Let me just show you the kit. Now, if you want to make that very version, you can. We've got a kit for it. So you need the instructions. You get the instructions in the kit. Oh, this is a good price, $19.99. And then you get two fat eighths of different fabrics for the flowers and a f uh, two fat quarters. Oh. Wait a minute, we've got half a metre and two fat quarters, I think, there. Because um, for that kit, you'd use the... Oh, I see. You've yeah, mixed so and matched. you make it up like that. I understand. Like that, I yeah. understand, right. Fab, well, show us how it's done. Okay. So, you have your square of fabric. Am I in the right place? Yeah, if you just go over to the left, slightly okay. more. That's oh yeah, perfect. there's my mark. Yeah, that's lovely. I think I'll be using this by now, wouldn't you? Okay, so you 
draw out this grid. Obviously, I give you all the dimensions in the pattern. Mm -hmm. And then you go from one... Now, it doesn't matter if you're left or right-handed. You can go whichever direction you want, but obviously just stay in the same direction. OK, so first of all, I've tied a knot in the end of my cotton about four times. And I'm just literally taking it through where the squares cross there. OK. Then I'm rotating it round, doing the same all the way round. And you would do this in a thread that's kind of similar to the fabric you're using. Oh, OK. I'm just doing it in pink so it shows up better. Mm -hmm. OK. And then when you finish, you just sort of pop it in where you can. Oh, back where you started. Yeah, yeah. OK, so you've sewn all around there. So then what you do is you put your thumb in the middle and then you pull it tight like that. OK, so you end up with one of those things that looks like one of those. Oh, yeah. Yeah. OK, so you put your needle down and then you take two of the points that are next to each other and you open it out and you finger press a fold like that. So it's kind of, that's a, that's a good picture, isn't it? OK, so you've got mm -hmm. that like that. Yeah. OK. Then what I do is rotate it round and do exactly the same again. So you're always folding the same side. So I'm folding this side. OK, and again, spinning round. Fold, and again the last one, fold in like that, okay, and then if you just Ooh. manipulate the fabric Ooh. like that, then you'll have that on the other side, okay. Oh, that's cute already. Yeah, so what you do before you turn him over, take your glue pen, oh dear, that's a bit dirty isn't it? Well loved. Oof. Is that one of ours? That was one of mine. Oh, is it? Yeah. OK, so what you then do is you open this fold up and you just put a little bit of glue there to hold it together nicely. And again, just rotate round. And this is something you can do in front of the TV because oh, there's a lot yeah. of stuff that's that you have to be at the sewing machine to do, don't there you? There is, there is. So there's that, OK? And then what we're going to do is take the needle and poke it through the centre so it comes out the other side. And you want to make sure, you want to try and get it as in the middle as you can. Mm -hmm. OK? And then we're going to repeat what we've just done. So just glue those folds down again. You want to be making sure you keep it within the quarter of an inch seam allowance. You don't mm. want to coming down further. Right. See, that looks gorgeous just as it is. Yeah. Yeah, you could just stitch around that, couldn't mm, you? You could. OK. Come here. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go in through the side. So you're just taking, like, a, literally a couple of threads from the side. Oh, sort of dead centre. Yeah. And then rotating it round, going again. And again. And then just coming out you started mm -hmm. okay I just need a, a bead so you need to get yourself some beads I mean you don't have to put mm. beads on them you can just stitch them stitch the top closed mm -hmm. um, but if you're gonna buy some beads you need um, four or five mil round beads okay um, and just make sure that you can fit a needle through them mm -hmm. because sometimes I've bought them where you can't fit the needle through sure okay so then you're just gonna pull that tight Oh, and look like okay, it's a flower. So you've got a little flower. Mm. Then you get that glue off my finger because that doesn't look very pleasant, does it? 
and then you just fold them together do a couple of stitches in the middle there twisting round fold the other way that is so clever mm. and then I'm just going to pop the bead on and just stitch around that a couple of times if only the sewing bee contestants had watched this before they did Japanese week eh? <laughs> Japanese. Were you a fan? Did you watch Sewing Bee? I haven't watched oh. it. To be honest, I don't really watch a lot of telly. Ah. They had they had to make an origami inspired dress. I oh, really folded fabric. Wow. Mm. But I'm just thinking you could put this into like around a cuff or around a yeah. sleeve head yeah. or something like that. You could piece it into the sleeve, couldn't you? Or down the front of a jacket. Yeah. yeah definitely. Oh, that is gorgeous. Okay, so then all you do to finish it off is poke the needle into one of the holes, uh -huh. bring it out the back and then just like, do a couple of stitches just to tie it off. Yeah. But I would say you do you do need a glue pen for this. Yeah. Um, because when you're joining when you're joining them together in these rows mm -hmm. oh, sorry here you go so when you're joining them together in the rows um it's easier to use the glue pen than try and be forcing them together because you've mm. got quite a lot like a lot of bulk and stuff and they're only small but with the pattern i've done the instructions if you want to do that biscornu shape yeah um or if you want to make it just as a normal square cushion um you can so it's there's so the clever. instructions for both. It's so yeah, clever. I yeah. love it. I love it. And then it. on the back, you've got your, your seam allowance there. Yeah. So you don't even have to, you can just follow the follow the lines on your sewing mm -hmm. machine rather than thinking you've got so to do So you can machine piece these together? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's Great. how I did it. Job done. Well, yeah. So I'd be doing it too. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, you've done it. You've done it. You have gone through and demoed seven different patterns. <laughs> Thank you so much. Amazing, amazing work. I'm going to have a pina colada. Yeah, pina colada <laughs> and a cuddle of a kitten. Aww. It's National Kitten Day as well. Yeah. So, you know, com why not combine both? That's what I do. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank Victoria. You. Do you know when you're back? Yeah, 24th of July, not long. That isn't long at I know. all. Fantastic. Look forward to seeing you back. Look after that voice. Thank you. All right, see you soon. Thanks. Thank you. All right, <laughs> keep going through for your patterns, won't you, and also for your kits. We've gone through a lot in the last hour and a half or so. So make sure you get the kit or the pattern that you want by having a look through the website um, and ordering. Are we going to go to break now? Mm. We're going to go to break now. When we come back, we're going to do a roundup of quilt kits you will love. Hi everyone, my name is Jules Mayouf and I'm really excited to be a guest designer on Sewing Street. It's combining two of my favourite things which are sewing and designing. Uh, I live in London at the moment but I'm originally from Staffordshire uh, so I think I've got a combination of two really great things so London's really diverse and um, lots of different cultural impacts and then Staffordshire is very rural so there's a lot of country influence in what I do. My grandma first taught me to sew when I was in my early teens. She was a dressmaker and she was always sewing and taking in orders from different people. Um, and I think I got my initial love of sewing from her. Um, I started making my clothes uh, because I couldn't find anything that was fashionable. So I created my own fashion. A um, bit dubious at times probably. I remember once I um, bought some really lovely, as I thought, heavy brocade material. I created a pencil skirt, thought I was fabulous. It turned out to be curtaining, uh, and I got quite a lot of stick from that. But I, you know, in my defense, I was a new romantic, and I, I think I was just fashion forward. Um, I have done a lot of um, teaching and coaching and mentoring 
are in sewing in my career. Um, and I would think that probably the best tip that I can give to people, because um, all age groups have various challenges, but the best tip is to be kind and good to yourself and don't worry about if you make mistakes because you've always got your seam ripper to hand. I'm really looking forward to my shows with Sewing Street and helping you have some hints and tips and knowledge. So I look forward to seeing you soon. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. Full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Hi there, welcome back to Sewing Street. Oh, don't you love Victoria Carrington? What a talented, talented designer. I so enjoyed seeing all of those demos and all of those different quilt kits. Absolutely smashing. Now then, in this hour, we've got a roundup of quilt kits um, and some absolutely gorgeous ones. It's where to start, really. But, you know, great opportunity to get yourself everything you need to make a, a, a quilt, finished quilt. And I suppose the real benefit of buying a quilt kit is that you know exactly what your finished quilt or wall hanging will look like before you start making it. And that's half the battle, isn't it, for a lot of us? We want to know that our fabrics will work, our colours will work. But, you know, every time you make up a quilt kit, it'll give you more confidence to create your own quilt, use your scraps, use your yardage as well. So it's a combination of the two. Now then, where shall we start? 
Let's start with buddhas and chakras. Yeah, that sounds like a nice idea. Okay, let's start with Buddha. Now, oh, I say John Scott's birthday Buddha. Is that the name of the pattern? John Scott's birthday Buddha, or is it just called Buddha? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's fabulous. Now, am I right in saying that Delphine designed this, but sort of John had a little hand in designing this as well, didn't he? I had some input. Definitely had some input, yeah. Oh, it's lush. I love it. And I love all those sort of rainbow colours in the back, um, in the background. That's sort of the different colours of the chakras, isn't it? Chakras. Of course, with Delphine's patterns, you always get full-size applique templates. Remember, you don't reverse these. You trace them onto the glue side of the Bonda web. You've got your layout diagram as well. Oh, and your quilting pattern. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, 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 for quilting. Absolutely beautiful. Now, I've got to tell you, we're down to single figures. Let me show you what you get in that quilt kit. So, you've got your background fabric. Now, this isn't navy solid. This is a gorgeous mottle. It is really beautiful. And you're getting two metres of that to create the background. Size-wise, it's a 48-inch square. Now, this would make a really beautiful and, well, for a lot of, I think back to my student days, very appropriate quilt to send off with a student going off to college or university because, you know, it's... It's often a time when lots of us are kind of exploring different ideas and I just think it's a beautiful thing. So you've got your background, you've got, this purple will be for your binding, am I right? No, this is for your Buddha. This is for your Buddha. Not sure what this is for. Oh. Oh, okay. Ah. Ah, so this is the Buddha. This is for the tree, the branches that go out. And then all of your little rainbow hearts. Oh, now this is a bit special. Let me show you this. So you get an exclusive printed panel. Oh, my goodness me. I'm in heaven. Oh, that is fabulous. Oh, that is fabulous. I bet that's not available on its own, is it? Nope. Nope. Look at that. Oh, that is absolutely gorgeous for $54.99. Oh, that is really wonderful. Oh, I'd be cutting these the hearts out of this so carefully so I'd got loads left over. Lovely picture of it. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh, Delphine is clever. Beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. Uh, how many have we got left of those? Just eight left. That's all we've got left. Eight of those kits. Well done if you've already checked out. Oh, that is lovely. Right, so that's that. And then we've also got chakras, did you say? That's the Buddha wall hanging. Cha oh, have we got instructions on their own? No, because they... Oh, it is instructions on their own thank you thank you right okay well that makes me very happy because I'd like to make this and I'm thinking it would be a great scrap buster as well instructions on their own for 9.99 now these could be all your little bits of rainbow colored scraps it could be all your bits of kaif or Anna Maria Horner or Liberty scraps would be amazing if you've got loads of little maybe mini charms two and a half inch squares Perhaps you got them from Alice Caroline That would be beautiful for in the background and then have more of a Liberty Buddha really stunning Full instructions again from Delphine for 9.99. All right gorgeous Okay, next up the chakra quilt kit. Now you, it's this one here, is it? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, that is different. Oh, that is really different. So you've got your instructions and then you've got your pattern to create your chakra quilt. Oh my goodness, let me show you. So this is the quilt top. 
This is stunning. I'm going to have to hold it sideways so I can get it all in. But that is really beautiful. That is really beautiful. I love that. Isn't that gorgeous? That is stunning. Right, so what you get, you get a great big stack of solids to create your pieced background. And then those chakras are printed on a panel. So you'll put fusible web on the back and then cut them out carefully. Now, my top tip for making this quilt would be to invest in a pair of Karen K. Buckley scissors. Because when I spoke earlier on about precision cutting out of appliques, this is what I'm talking about. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Being able to cut out these sections smoothly, neatly, perfectly. And that's what you need. Yeah, you'd get into all of those intricate parts so, so well, wouldn't you? And then look at all these gorgeous solids. You've got all of your beautiful reds into oranges. And then you're going then into those beautiful warm yellows and that cooler lemon. Next up, of course, fresh spring green and moss. Aqua. Oh my goodness me. Look at this. Deeper blues and then you get right through to purple. Well I just want this for the rainbow coloured fabrics. Those are absolutely gorgeous. Plus that chakra panel and your instructions for $69.99. What a phenomenal kit. And you know, if, if you want to make something that's a bit different, perhaps for somebody that wouldn't want a traditional quilt, and you want to make them a quilt, perhaps to take off to college or uni, or as a gift, 18th birthday present, or a 21st birthday present, or older, um, what a beautiful, beautiful project. And I think it redefines what a quilt is. Yummy absolutely yummy you might have a space in your home which you use for meditation you could have this on the wall couldn't you and have that in a sort of you know if you have a special place in your home where you go to do your yoga or your meditation or just somewhere that you go to you know sort of sit quietly and just be still absolutely lovely absolutely lovely and also it's just a gorgeous collection of fabric Yummy. I've not seen that before. Oh, it's been kept from me. That's what it is. It's been kept from me. Love that. Okay. And that's also a Delphine. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. What's next? Anna Maria Horner. And what's it called? Fly with me. Now we've got a finished quilt here. Cat, would you mind just holding? Uh, we can hold it side on, can't we? Oh, that is lush. Oh, that is gorgeous. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. Hi, yeah. That's a big quilt. That's a really big quilt, 152 by 180. So really good. This would go very nicely actually on a single bed. Over the sides, you know, tuck under the pillow. Or you could have it as a double bed topper. That's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. Absolutely gorgeous. Now that is called Come Fly With Me. Thank you, Kat. Now, um, in your kit, this is from the collection Made My Day <coughs> and you get over nine metres of fabric in there. Oh, that's absolutely stunning. All of your fabrics included. Oh, so gorgeous. You know these kits well. You can always come with full instructions. Now this one uses some templates. 
So, top tip would be, if you're buying this, grab yourself um, some template plastic. I would grab some template plastic. Now, I've just had a message on Facebook and I just want to ask, April, you've messaged in to say, any chance this is the, pan the, the panel and the pattern is available on its own as I have heaps of fabric? Is that the chakra? We'll check. Is the pattern available on its own? Is the panel available on its own? No. No. So we don't. Okay, really sorry about that. Just available as a whole kit. Um, but the good news is you do get everything to recreate Delphine's exact pattern. So in here you have all those lovely fabrics. Let's just open this one up and show you what's inside. Hmm. Oh, we're doing a price drop. Was two four nine ninety nine? That's amazing. Fifty pounds off. Yes, please. I'll take that. Oh, this is a gorgeous selection of fabric. Wow, that pink stripe is amazing, isn't it? Just beautiful. Bold and beautiful. Lovely, warm, summery colours. That's divine. Yeah, absolutely. A way to keep the summertime going all year round. Imagine in the depths of winter when it's bleak and gloomy outside and you're snuggled under that quilt or maybe in your guest room or you could hang that on the wall. It is an absolutely stunning quilt made from really beautiful fabric and uh, something to enjoy making. Like I say, I would include some template plastic in your order. You could use a cereal box to make your templates as well. That also works. But you'll uh, make some templates. Or you could use freezer paper as well, which we also have on the website. And then you can cut that out and you can just iron it to your fabric and cut out your pieces. Okay, that's that one. Well done if you managed to get hold of that. Oh, now then. Just last week, I was here as a guest with the Tilda Floral Wreath Quilt. Now this is beautiful. And it's using the Garden Life collection from Tilda. And then it's combined with some Moda Grunge. Now I'm just gonna open out a little bit of it on the table, just so that you can get a look at the, f at the beautiful fabrics. They are stunning. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. So. All of the fabrics that have been used for the floral wreath itself, these are all from Garden Life from Tilda. All of your leaves are also from Tilda's Garden Life. And then the purple in the background is Moda Grunge. And then look, it's also been used for the binding. That's gorgeous, isn't it? That's another Tilda fabric on the backing. You don't get the backing included, but that just goes to prove, doesn't it, what a beautiful backing on a quilt can do. How about a little price crash? One seven nine ninety nine for that. Fabulous! It is gorgeous, and it's a big quilt. This it's a really big quilt. I'm just going to grab the box down just so you can see the full size. It's a hundred and eighty by a hundred and ninety seven. So it's a great big quilt. Piecing wise, easy piecing. It is stitch and flip units. So. Each of these is a little snowball unit. Each of these is a little stitch and flip. You have exactly the same method for both of them. And then um, rather than joining them together into flowers, you just join into rows and create your blocks. But they're big blocks. Stunning. Stunning. Now, something else from Delphine is her horse wall hanging. And we've got some kits for these. Let me start by grabbing the quilt and show, showing you. Oh, you know, the thing I, well, there's lots of things I love about Delphine's work, but her quilting is always stunning. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm just going to open this out. Isn't that beautiful? With the little sequins as well. And she's used some gorgeous batik fabrics there. If I just hold it up now and show you from a distance. That's stunning, isn't it? 
absolutely gorgeous now i think we all know somebody who's really into horses um, that this would make a perfect gift for um, we've got three different options of kit um, let me see what we've got first of all we've got a gorgeous green version um, and uh, there we go so the green version has a pack of green batiks so you've got five fat quarters of gorgeous green batiks that you're going to mix and match then you've got your background fabric yeah love that it's kind of mottled almost like a sort of um a grayish beige yeah beautiful that's going to be stunning absolutely stunning and then you make a scrappy binding for your wall hanging using what's left of your batiks so you get enough there to make the whole of the quilt front and the binding for 29.99 including the pattern so that's the green version now what about a blue version so a deep blue background so actually none of our versions reproduces Delphine's quilt exactly because she did hers on a white background. Of course, if you did want to do it on a white background, you could always order, I'm guessing about a meter of background fabric. Um, let me have a quick look. Uh, is it a meter of fabric in the back for the background? looks like it yeah a meter yeah so you, just a meter of white fabric you could add in if you want to do a white background but anyway our kits have uh, a meter of the navy mottle and then five fat quarters of batiks to create the horse and the binding plus your pattern and then last of all we have got a multicolored version now this is really stunning you've got the navy blue background again but this time, look at this selection of batiks, all multicoloured. Really lovely. That's stunning. Okay, so that is the, what's it called? Una. Una the horse okay next up we're going to do the strawberry fields wall hanging now this is a kit from village fabrics um, and you get everything in the kit now this was designed by um, Elaine McAtam Yvonne sorry Yvonne McAtamney and um, it's a gorgeous wall hanging this I was here for the launch show and saw this close up it is absolutely stunning it's a beautiful piece of work uh, based, of course, on William Morris's Strawberry Thief uh, fabric. Now, it's 25 inches tall, 19 inches wide, and has this beautiful, um, it's a bond webbed and then buttonhole or blanket stitch applique uh, design. There's some embroidery. These strawberry stems are embroidered. And then, obviously, a couple of borders but absolutely stunning. And I love the fact that this little bit of applique over here goes into the borders. So obviously you'd applique this first of all, add your borders and then add this final bit of embroidery and applique at the end. Now you get everything inside the kit in order to make that wall hanging, apart, apart from your backing and your batting of course, and you'll need some bonder web. But all of your fabrics, all of the bits that would be really hard to put together, you know, and if you only need a little tiny bit of something, um, you'd probably have to buy a fat quarter, wouldn't you, in order to have that fabric, whereas you've got just what you need for this wall hanging for $36.99. Mm, gorgeous. Really lovely, that. Okay, next up. Shall we do... Why don't we do the Amanda Little? Is that good? Let's do Amanda Little. Now then... Uh, oh, this is so pretty. So this is diamond layer cake quilt. Now then, first of all, I'm going to show you this version. Oh, it's stunning. Isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely beautiful. 
gorgeous um, 1930s vibe to it and that's all about the fabrics well and the design too as well of course because it's very traditional quilt blocks from the 1930s that have a look at what you're getting in this kit so you get your little house quilt pattern from Amanda Little so you get your design now this finished quilt just to let you know the size is 48 inches by 64 inches and it uses a layer cake plus some yardage absolutely stunning you have your moda layer cake and this is all beautiful 1930s inspired prints so they're kind of lovely primary colors blues and reds you have some soft pinks as well. You get greens, some purples. It's like a kind of box of coloring pencils, really. Some pretty sunny yellows, some multicolors as well, that gorgeous little floral. And then you get your white solid, which is for your background, and then your yellow solid for your binding. So you're getting everything you need, apart from backing and batting, to create this quilt. It's beautiful and it's 74.99. It's very, very popular. Lots and lots of these in baskets, single figures. So check out your basket very, very quickly if you want to secure yourself this version of the Diamond Layer Cake Quilt. So that's one version that you could go for. We have a second version, which we've called Floral. Yeah. Okay, so this time around, you've got, rather than the white background, you've got this, now is this Ecru? I think this is an ecru solid for your background and then you've got this lovely selection of vintage florals so this is going to be for your piecing so you can see here and these look like they're all different just lovely ditzy florals some really like small ones little daisy prints very cute very very pretty all small scale florals so easy to live with if you love liberty i'd say this would be very appealing it's got a little bit of a 1950s feel to it as well in lots of the designs you get loads of variety there absolutely loads and then you've got your blue solid that's copen blue to bind it and then you also get your pattern as well all for 69.99 also proving very popular great love those two now then Tula Pink King Prawn Quilt it's not called the King Prawn Quilt it's called Kings and Pawns now let me show you the quilt because the quilt is spectacular absolutely spectacular now very pertinent day to be looking at this quilt because Victoria did the demonstration for how to cut and piece diamonds and you're going to use similar methods. Oh, it is glorious. Absolutely glorious. Check that out. Isn't that stunning? Isn't that stunning? So you've got those large diamonds with a border around them of smaller diamonds and then you've got almost like a checkerboard diamond block in between. So a little bit more intermediate advanced piecing but as you know we saw earlier on with Victoria's demos absolutely achievable you just have to take your time match your seams enjoy the process you know cut accurately sew accurately but it's just an absolutely glorious piece of work isn't it now the price for this kit is $199.99 details are on screen you can get split pays of $66.66 and three of those and you're done but you only have to pay the first one in order to get this amazing quilt uh, kit home I just want to show you very quickly on the back of this quilt here's that backing fabric we had it earlier isn't that glorious for backing a quilt especially a Tula quilt oh hello Ben what have you done while I was looking away we've just made a saving 178.99 now Thank you. There we go. Have you finished that fruitcake up? 
I'll eat the last slice, go on. Yeah, but he never did. No, you should eat it up now. I made fruit cake yesterday. Okay, what I didn't tell the guys actually, I did tell Victoria this. I made two beautiful fruit cakes yesterday and then baked them, came out of the oven, look, smell, absolutely delicious, gorgeous, you know, and uh, popped one in the freezer and brought the other one down. And then after about an hour, I went through and I said to Charlie, I'm an absolute dolly. I said, you know what I've done, don't you? And he said, what have you done? I said, I forgot to put the eggs in the fruit cake. I forgot to put the eggs in. So, the, so that is an egg free fruit cake, but it tastes good, right? You wouldn't know, you wouldn't know because my fruit cakes are heavy. Well, they're very moist, you know, so. Yeah, you like it. Okay, cool, that's great. Maybe I've invented a new thing, eggless fruit cake. It probably still already exists. Anyway, that's our Kings and Pawns quilt kit from Tula Pink. Now then, let's do Moda. Moda. Which one? Nova Star. This one, or this one. This is called Meander. Yeah? Anila Hoey. That's gorgeous. Now that's got my name written all over it. That is a very, very me quilt. It does match my shirt. Yeah, what it's meant to be, isn't it? Is it? Okay, so Ben, our, our producer, this was the first quilt kit that he ever launched. Gosh, that's lovely. So the, so the quilt pattern is called the Nova Star Quilt, then came June. So that I'm, I'm imagining that the quilt is called Then Came June. And then you get these fabrics. Now that's really interesting because I wasn't necessarily expecting those fabrics to make that quilt but that is absolutely glorious now I really love that it's kind of pumpkin oranges federal blue tan and cream I just think that is absolutely lush <sighs> really yummy go on what's your favorite thing about this quilt kit Ben the fact that you launched it and that now gives you permission in your head at least to do whatever you want and what would that Im oh there you go I know what that means well let's not oh nice one 99.99 I think it's stunning 54 inches by 68 inches at last one that's in inches that I can understand I think that's smashing gorgeous and also as well when you see it from a distance do you get a sense of that sort of almost curves in the piecing the illusion that you get it's ever so cleverly done oh I'd like to make that love it well I'd like it for my home actually I think that's beautiful and that's a really nice size actually for throwing over a large sofa or something like that or throwing over a large horse possibly as well gorgeous Yum. Okay, that's that one. We do. Oh, now then. Jason Yenta. Jason Yenta is, for me, the king of taking two fabrics and making something incredible. Because would you believe, would you believe that this quilt, okay, is made out of two fabrics. I'm just going to open this pattern up and see if there, that we've got, we should have the full size picture of the green background. Yes we have, there it is. Right, so this is the quilt kit we've got. How stunning is that? And that is made from two fabrics, but what fabrics they are. Let me just show. Now how many of this quilt kit have we got? Right, we've less than 10. We've less than 10. Let me show you what's so clever about this. I mean, hello, I want this just for the fabric. 
So this is a half width of fabric. So you've actually got four repeats of this really wide border, okay? And this is what you're going to then fussy cut the same identical repeats, okay, of, of this border print. And then when you stitch them together, it's going to create these blocks, okay? But these also, well, in fact, they're on, they're on point. They're, they're like this here. But this also creates these little squares, these setting squares. And then you use more of that border print for around the outside. It's incredibly clever. It is an intermediate or a committed beginner level, okay? You don't need to be an advanced sewer to make this quilt. I think that's stunning. Absolutely stunning. Mm. And the quality of the fabric is exceptional. It is so silky soft and smooth. It is a real thing of beauty. Um, love Jason Yenge's fabrics. They're all digitally printed rather than traditional printing. So the detail, the colour, the luminescence that you get in the fabrics, you just can't beat it. Stunning. Stunning. All right. Okay, what's next? Yep, yes, got it. Okay, so we, <coughs> excuse me, beg your pardon. We recently had, now then, who was our lovely guest? Sarah Brandholm, yeah, Brangwyn. Sarah Brangwyn uh, came in. We were there together, I was presenting, she was guesting Sarah Bramwin uh, from Maiden Making and did a demo of Stack and Whack. What a fantastic technique. So what you're going to do in this technique, you've got your full pattern and you've got your fabric to make this gorgeous large wall hanging. It's approximately 55 inches by 50. You're going to use the large scale print and you're going to cut six strips of fabric from it. You're gonna layer them up identical strips, you're going to layer them up and you're going to match up the pattern all the way through the stacks and then you're going to cut big triangles, identical triangle kits from each stack and then you'll put those together with your background fabric and you get these amazing kaleidoscope effects. I don't know if you can get right in and see that, but you get these amazing kaleidoscope effects when you join six identical pattern triangles together. Isn't that clever? Really clever. Um, and also what's really cool is there are no templates. You don't need templates for this. You're just going to use your regular 6x24 cutting ruler. So nothing extra to buy. It's a really cool technique, great fabric, really pretty, make a lovely gift. Okay, so that's the Lewis and Irene version. We've got a Moda version. Now this is using um, fabric from La Vie Bohème, which is a collection by French General love this collection. You've got your large scale print, you're going to use this for your stack and whack, this is your background. You've also got Sarah Brangwyn's uh, instructions for stack and whack for $53.99. <coughs> Excuse me. And then last up we've got one more, I think this might be my favourite version. It's joyous, it's absolutely joyous. So this is rhubarb, what's it called, rhubarb and something, isn't it? Rhubarb and roses, isn't it? What's it called? I'm probably just making it up. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Well, this is our large scale print. So this is what you're gonna stack and whack. And then this is your background fabric. $49.99, great value, plus your instructions. That's the only way you can get the instructions, by the way. Instructions on their own are not available. But a brilliant kit, and great to learn a new technique. Remember, no templates needed, nice and easy. Oh, two of those left, only two. Grab them quick, won't you? 
Yeah, we have. Now then, where are we going to go? Oh, this is lovely. This is lovely. So I guested this and Deputy Joan made the sample, which I don't have with me. But have a look at this gorgeous quilt. It's called Lovey Dovey and it's from a fabric range called Love Note by Leila Boutique. It is so pretty. <coughs> now, what you're going to do is there were literally one of these left. Wow, okay, well lucky you if you managed to get this one because it is glorious. So you're going to make nine blocks to create this quilt. It's 72 inches square. Yeah, oh, how's that for a memory? Uh, each of these blocks, this is one of your blocks, and you're going to piece all of these heart units and they are made stitch and flip. So Victoria did a demo earlier on, on stitch and flip. It's a really easy technique. You get great accuracy. <laughs> okay, so Ben has said, can you ask the viewers? So 179.99, this is getting very much like a live auction. Um, if we knock 20 pounds off, can we tempt you? 159.99, what do you say? We shouldn't really do it, but we've got one left. It's a beautiful kit. Um, you piece the center as well, that dove, even that star, it's all pieced. And um, don't be put off thinking, how would you start piecing a dove? It is squares and rectangles, that's it. Squares and rectangles, it is uh, sewing units together, you know, strip piece units, and then it is stitch and flip. It is very easy. Well, there you go. We've crashed the price, 159.99, but there's literally one left. Yeah, that's right. Let's, we need to get rid of the evidence of Ben's wrongdoing. Yeah, 159.99, really gorgeous kit, and you get so much lovely fabric in there as well. Beautifully packaged. You've got your full quilt pattern as well, and then you get, look at this massive stack of fabric. This is probably the one you're gonna buy. Beautiful, big stack of fabric. You get so many fat quarters and fat eights in there as well of all those beautiful fabrics. And it's a lovely sort of soft, romantic, kind of shabby chic. Uh, palette you know but really really lovely and if you were thinking about making that as a wedding gift or an anniversary gift I think it would be perfect absolutely perfect what you could do potentially is um, I don't know I'm just thinking where you could maybe embroider some initials and a date if it was a wedding or an anniversary that would be nice I'm also thinking that maybe you could just hand embroider a little fine ribbon in the center dove's beak okay and then you could attach two little yeah, you know, little brass rings or something like two little wedding rings just attach with a little bit of um, fine ribbon so they're being held in the beaks, in the beak of the dove. Absolutely lovely. Okay, there's five of these in baskets. We've got one left. We've taken 20 pounds off. Last chance to buy that now for 159.99. I'm gonna leave that there. Now can we, here I go. Here I go. This is from Dina Designs. Oh, this is so pretty. This is so, so pretty. That is lovely. This is romantic and soft and gentle, but also vibrant as well. The border fabric is incredible. Look at that. There's literally one of these kits left. I think that border fabric is stunning. Seriously. Wow, no, 50 pounds off that, 99.99, but we've literally got one. Let me, I'm gonna very, very quickly hold up the quilt so you can see. That is really, really gorgeous. How lovely is that? Sold out, gone, well done, well done. What a bargain, 99.99. Ben, you're going to get in so much trouble. The Moda Love Note, Lovey Dovey has sold out too. 
We've got one more kit. This is also from Dina Designs. This is called Paradise Lane, which also happens to be where I live. In my head, certainly. We've got one of these. We've got one of these. Now I'm going to open out the quilt kit first of all, so you can see. Absolutely beautiful. Quarter log cabins but really different. The way it's been put together is actually very, very chic, very modern, but with very pretty fabrics. That's stunning, go for it. 134.99, there you go, 114.99. How many of these have we got left? One, one, that's it, just the one. Grab it while you can. What a great bargain. What a fantastic bargain. I think really it's much, much nicer in, in uh, real life. The picture doesn't do it justice. You don't see all the lovely detail in the fabrics. You've got flamingos in there and tropical flowers. It's really beautiful. <coughs> that is our absolute lowest price. We've literally got one left, 114.99 for that. Last one. Do remember to check out on that. Nope, really isn't, really isn't yours. Now then, do you want to revisit anything? Let's revisit a couple. Now, oh sorry, fiddling around in my ear today. Either my ears change shape or something. So I've been lying on it. Kings and prawns. Hmm. Now, I wonder if, Kat, would you mind just coming and helping me hold this up, please? I'll just show you this, because it is such a beautiful quilt, and it's a really good size as well. Um, there we go. Yeah, that's the top. Okay. Oh, that is absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? So lovely. And just to give you a sense of the, the size of it, there we go. That is lovely. And you've got such distinctive designs in there that when you get close, you really get a sense of those designs. The butterflies, the flamingos, the parrots. But then when you kind of step back from it, what you see is this glorious sort of saturated pastel rainbow and just this wonderful kind of ombre effect around each of the large diamonds. Very cleverly done. You get such a gorgeous stack of fabric in your kit for this um, for 178.99. Let me open this up and show you what you get. <coughs> this one's already been rifled through. Wow, just look at that. Absolutely stunning. So you've got your pattern, okay. And um, there's a couple of templates. Don't be alarmed by those. Don't be alarmed by templates. You know, um, you wanna trace these out onto something like either. I would actually definitely trace these onto clear template plastic because you're going to fussy cut, especially the large diamonds, you're gonna fussy cut a lot of those. So if you can see through your template, you'll get a much more accurate result than using cardboard. Um, so you get all your instructions and then just look at all this wonderful fabric. And you get, you know, a generous amount, generously enough, shall we say. So you, you're not gonna be tight for fabric. So, you know, when you're cutting out, cut as frugally as you can. So you've got a few little leftovers that you can piece together to make maybe a little bag or a little something like that. There's just loads of fabric there, absolutely loads. I love that one. I love the design, but I love that sort of burnt orange background as well. It's divine. You do get your binding as well, of course, for 178.99. Yeah, it's great value. It's really great value. Mm. Now, let me pop that away. Now, um, talking of great value, terrific value, the <coughs> Nova Star quilt. And then came 
June, wasn't it? And then came June. A beautiful pattern for a quilt and then in this selection of fabrics is absolutely stunning. Now for me that's very autumny. It's a gorgeous autumny quilt. It's kind of got a little bit of uh, sort of harvest festival, barn dance, Halloweeny. But of course there's nothing Halloweeny about any of the fabrics. But it's just that combination of pumpkin orange, federal blue and those creams and, and ecrus in the background. Yeah, just stunning. Now the quilt itself is 54 inches by 68 inches. So a fantastic throw size for a large sofa. Would also go really well on a bed as a topper. Mm, gorgeous, I love that. I'd really like to make that. Really nice. And a great combination. You've got things like plaids in there. You've got some micro checks. You've got some sort of feature prints and you've got some kind of semi-solids as well, some tone on tones. Absolutely gorgeous. Really, really gorgeous. Now talking of gorgeous, can't believe you're getting all that for under £100. Talking of gorgeous, today we have been celebrating all things Karen K Buckley. She's been well, one of my favourite quilters, I really admire her work. She is an incredible artist. Her applique quilts are second to none. And she brought out a range of scissors a few years ago and they very, very quickly became sewers' favourites. And there's a reason, you know, there's a reason. They are stunning. They are super, super sharp, right to the point, and they stay sharp. Use them just for your fabrics and threads, of course, but they are incredible. Um, these are your large general purpose. Absolutely perfect for things like cutting out appliques and snipping into seam allowances, precision cutting. So for example, earlier on we had Delphine Brooks Chakras quilt, where you're having to cut out really intricate appliques. Actually, any of Delphine's appliques, these would be so, so perfect for that. Essential, I think. You get your blade cover as well. Keep that on your blades when they're not in use, just to protect them, because you wouldn't ever want to, well, if you dropped these scissors with the guard on, your points will be protected. Now, Victoria also has Karen K. Buckley scissors. She had them with me. You often see me using my purple handled ones. Um, and Victoria says she's had those for years and they are still as sharp as the day she bought them. Fabulous. That's what you want. That's what you want. We deserve the best tools. We deserve the best tools. Now, next up, this is multi-purpose scissors so same style of scissor but in the small version okay so these again are absolutely super sharp right to the point comfortable soft handles so you're not going to get that kind of I get sort of dents on my fingers and sometimes blisters if I do lots of cutting out but these are really soft and comfortable for when you're cutting out yeah yeah, it's true actually. Charlie, our director, was just saying with small scissors, you tend to get small holes to try and cram your fingers through, but these are not. I can comfortably get two fingers through and my thumb is very comfortably accommodated there. So those do feel lovely and comfortable. These are going to be particularly good for detail cutting, small appliques or very detailed work. Um, also, of course, they're brilliant for trimming threads as well. Um, now, with that in mind, our last pair of Karen K. Buckley scissors, these are the curved. Now, these ones have micro serrations along the blade, absolutely tiny. I don't know if, if, if even the camera will pick them up, but you have these micro serrations along the blade. And what they do is when you're cutting fabric or thread, they grip the fabric or thread it's almost like a, you know like mole grips have those little sort of serrations along them. Look at me, how butch can you get? Um, it holds the thing in place. They, they will do the same for your fabric and thread. Now because of the, these are curved, they have a curved end to them and they're going to go beautifully under your like presser foot. So when you've sewn something and you want to get in there and maybe trim embroidery threads, plique threads or uh, machine quilting, 
threads really close to the surface. So you can get in, you don't have to take your work out of the machine, you can get in there and snip. Or when you're doing that final sort of trim up at the end when you've done your quilting and you're just going over sort of picking out any loose threads or, um, you know, tying in uh, your quilting threads. Absolutely perfect for that for $22.99. Now it's time to do our menu. So let's see what's coming up tomorrow with Bex. It's Rebecca Reed at 8 a.m. bag making. At 9 a.m. Jenny Jackson's here with her sloth English paper piece in cushion and wall hanging. Now at 10 a.m. needles and threads. And then at 11 a.m. Uh, begin a foundation paper piecing windmill quilt with Jenny Jackson. Now at 12 o'clock it's Yarn Lane. West Yorkshire spinners are here with guest Danielle Dean. So a great morning. Make sure that you tune in tomorrow morning for Sewing Street. Now you don't need to go anywhere. You can have a full afternoon with Hobby Maker, our sister channel. Let me tell you what's coming up on Hobby Maker. One o'clock Debbie Moore Designs Gnome Collection with Mandy Jane Taylor. At two o'clock Hunky Dory Winter Wildlife Collection with Auntie Pauline Wheeler. At 3 p.m. Deflecto and Craft Room Must Haves. At four for the love of stamps Stamper Tag Christmas Collection with Pauline. Oh see she's getting like Cher now and Madonna she just needs just the first name. And at 5 p.m. Debbie Moore Designs Gnome Collection with Mandy Jane Taylor. Taylor. So don't go anywhere, stick around, stay with Hobby Maker. I'll see you on Tuesday. I'll be back on Tuesday. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye bye.